Hello everyone, my name is Matt, aka Legion Rex, and welcome to the Generic Anime Podcast, also known as The Gap. With me today, I have my uh, co-host, Shane, aka The Bearded One. How are you doing today, Shane? I'm doing pretty well. You're getting a lot better at these intros, I've noticed. <laughs> You're getting used to being a host. Yeah, yeah, it seems that way, yeah, yeah. Uh, also with me, I have... Another guest, considering that last week we had uh, our good friend Josh here. We have another good friend. You may have seen him on some of uh, Shane's content over on his channel. Uh, more specifically, the Sonic Two, uh, Son Sonic Adventure Two Let's Play. Uh, please Go welcome subscribe. Spencer. <laughs> please welcome Spencer. Hello. Thanks for having me. It's My God, it's Spencer, the boy. It's me again. He appears on wow, everything. Is this, it's, it's this guy. <clears throat> There's a single channel in which my reach does not go to. <laughs> it's 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 this guy who did, wanted me to make this is his ch his fucking uh, icon. Matt, put it on screen. <laughs> Look at him with his fucking sunglasses and his trench coat. Fucking. It wasn't a trench coat. It was a dress shirt. This is the great. It looks. Like, it kind of looks like a trench coat. This, actually. It might look like a trench coat. This picture, like when I just out, when but... I just when I just crop the head out, it kind of looks like yeah. a trench coat a little within bit. Our, you know, I'm fine yeah, with within that. our group, this picture has reached meme status. So it is. It's, it's literally an emote on our fucking Discord. So <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. it, has, it has coupled with like nine pictures of me, I guess. <laughs> I hey, I didn't do the nine pictures. You I the ones that yeah, you the one who gave me those. Status. So it's all you. It, I it's true. The, I, I did that to myself. I made the uh, Jason Statham one. Yeah. True. Who made the thonk? Oh, uh, that was, was that was me. Thonk? That was me. Okay. Of course it was. Wait, were you responsible for thonk? I was. was that in I found stuff? the thonk online, but I gave the. Thonk. Um. <laughs> okay. I gave, gave you all the thonk. Yeah, but okay, so. <laughs> Uh, what's how this is gonna work is we're gonna talk about some anime. We're gonna talk about some simulcasts. Yay. We're gonna talk about some news. We're gonna yeah. talk about the featured anime of the week. We're gonna talk about some other shit that yeah. may come up in discussion. Who knows what happens on this show? I don't no. know. Let's let's. We'll try not to ramble too much. We'll try not to we ramble. Promise. Too let's 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 try to keep this under six hours, guys. Uh. Now let's try and keep this under exactly seven hours and forty-seven minutes. Let's try to keep this under ten hours and seventy-five minutes. Was <laughs> seventy-five minutes? What? Yeah. This, yeah. My God. <laughs> My God. Apparently, we have broken the hour we've, counter. We've Apparently, we've the transcended counter. time itself. Set back the clock. It has been zero hours since the time time. <laughs> it's been zero hours since a time rift appeared. Yeah. Oof. Blah blah. Hey. So, we're going to start off with some... We're going to talk about the simulcasts uh, that we've been watching. Because, uh, honestly, we actually have quite... I think me and Shane, and even and Spencer as well, we have actually quite a bit to talk about with these, because this is some shit. Yeah. So, I don't think honestly, I have uh, much to talk about. This because... is, like, the first time I've been, like, you know, like watching simulcasts, like, as they're simulcasting. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I was gonna say I don't think I have much to talk about because the shows I've been watching are still good. So yeah. I'm just gonna there's be a, no. There's a couple a lot, things but... in those good shows that I think are worthy of discussion, specifically for one, yeah, and true. we'll get to it. Um, Spencer's gonna be the big one here because we're getting him on the simulcast train. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So Spencer, all aboard. what are you watching yes. this season? Um, this season I am currently watching uh, Pop Team Epic. Hell. I am watching Violet Evergarden. Mm -hmm. I am watching uh, uh, A Place Further Than the Universe. There we go. Ooh. I am watching uh, Darling of the Franks. Ooh. I am watching Killing Bites. Ooh. And I think that's it for Koku this Koku. season, at least. You're missing I've been watching Koku, oh, yeah, Koku, Koku. which I also missed last Koku. week, last, uh, last podcast as well. So that's... <laughs> Yeah, I'm not watching it. Koku. So That's you guys go crazy. Disney, I haven't mentioned Kokoku yet. Uh, Kokoku's been awesome. Kokoku has been some of the <laughs> greatest story animation. Listen, we'll get to that. We get to that, but it's really good. It's it's been a thing. It's been yeah. It's been quite quite good. Uh, I don't know where it's going, but I do. But I but I but I'm really enjoying. 
what it is right now. Uh, espe- yeah. Especially, con- uh, especially considering like you could easily fuck up this type of premise. And anime does that so much when it gets good premises. Anime fucks up so regularly; it's just a normal occurrence to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it if does. you think about it, anime is anime was a mistake. <laughs> it was a mistake. We all know. Wait, can anime I say that on this podcast? Or is oh, that- yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, anime was a mistake. We're all very anime aware of mistake. that. <laughs> yeah, but it's it. Uh, Kokoku's been one of the uh, one. It's got the best opening of the fucking season. That is that. I, I can't argue with say, that. That is, I really can't argue with that. To say I'm gonna go on record, and you can timestamp this for years to come, and state that Kokoku is arguably the best opening of the anime season. It is. So six minutes into episode three, Spencer said this. <laughs> this very bold claim that will have a lot of people going after him. A very bold leave claim. Some, uh, very bold some... claim that most people seem to agree with. It's not really a bold claim, but... I'm going to call it a bold claim because, I don't know, some people might like the intro to... Uh... Oh, wait, did I say Killing Bites? I did say Killing Bites, right? Yeah, you yes. did say Killing Bites. Okay, good. <clears throat> I don't know. Kill... Yeah, that's I don't what, know. Uh... Killing Bites and, is... Um, can we just talk about fucking killing bites? <laughs> okay, wait. Is that where we're gonna start? Is that the first anime we're gonna start with? We start, I, mean, I mean, we talked about Kokoku. Where else? Uh, way to I mean, start we, off on a high can, note. <laughs> yeah. Should we go back? Go, wait, we, we, we can go back to Kokoku because I think killing bites is something Shane wants to talk about. Well, I think fucking killing bites. Well, we, might go, be, well, we kind uh, of discussed Kokoku already. <laughs> like, we, like, this, I don't have much to say outside of it's really good right now. Uh, okay, without giving away too much, it's an interesting premise. Um, the opening is really good. The ending is totally dissonant, to put it oh, monthly. Fuck. Yeah, that shit um, too. Forgot about we that. We have. To, I have to mention the. I have to mention the ending of uh, the ending theme, and it's a. Uh, although it's a good theme, good ending. Um, it's really tonally dissonant from the uh, uh, fucking opening and show itself. Mm-hmm. Where there's like fan service shots of like the main girl, and you're just like, this is what? Who? Where? What anime am I watching? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just spent like 20, 22 minutes watching some crazy, like, horror psychological time based paradox anime. And then I get this happy go lucky bubbly fan service, and I'm like, this is not belonging in this anime. So that's really be- uh, the only thing I feel the need to kind of. Bring it belongs up, in Killing Bites. Speaking of killing bites, excellent segue. What is this show? <laughs> uh, brilliant. That's what that is. Fucking Shane. It's actually, I've, Shane it finally actually it. might be. Oh man, where to start? The dumbest show you've ever. I've watched. asked myself. It's that the question. dumbest <laughs> shit I've ever watched, and that's coming from someone who is a hardcore DBZ fan. <laughs> this out trumps DBZ in terms of stupidity. It's fucking dumb. Okay, but, I. I, uh, I, I got something to say about Killing Bites. So, um, specifically, uh, you two will know, uh, you first told me about the premise and the idea of Killing Bites, um, fucking in our... Oh, wait, can, I forgot, can I swear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, just, just wanted to make sure that this is no, like, hashtag Christian content. But fucking Josh did the same we thing. We don't give a it's fuck. Like, g- guys, guys. You know us. Okay, I do, but I, I, I don't know if this content is like... This uh, is an R-rated podcast. This, con- this content is not advertiser-friendly. Let's just put it this that way. This content is the rated R superstar of the podcast. <laughs> um, Ready to spear anime into the next season. Exactly. Anyways, yeah, so we were uh, getting food at the cafeteria at our university. Um, and you guys were like, hey, have you heard of Killing Bites? And I'm like... No, what the hell is Killing Bites? It sounds ridiculous. And you're, you just looked at me and went, okay, it's about Battle Royale with people who are mixed with animal DNA and their personalities are based off of the anime, animal, animal DNA. And um, I immediately was like, well, time for me to watch this. And fuck. <laughs> Yeah, that's what the ba- th- actual this... what am I watching? That's basically the best way to sum up this show is 
This is a clusterfuck. I but it's love the it. best kind of clusterfuck. I am loving this show. Is it... I don't know if it's... <clears throat> I have no idea if it's, like, objectively good, because I don't think it is. But no, like... no, God, no, it's not. <laughs> oh, no. Objectively, this anime is absolute trash. It is the worst trash you could think but of. But I'm really but enjoying it. I heard, I, I heard this somewhere, I can't remember where, but I heard this put beautifully. Killing Bites is the best kind of popcorn trash you could be watching right now. It's the perfect mm -hmm. kind of show that you just you grab a big old bowl of popcorn, you sit down, you shut your brain off, and you have a ton of fun with. Even though you know deep down inside, this is the worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is honest to God. If it wasn't so entertaining, I would probably hate it. If it if it wasn't so self aware of what it actually exactly. is. That it That's would actually, it would be actual trash that we would be avoiding, but if because it knows it was played straight, it because like, it knows what it is and it revels in that fact. It it's just fucking amazing. Yeah, it's so much fun. I mean, like let's 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 look at an anime that like is supposed to be serious but comes off as hilarious. Let's let, let's, let's talk about another. <laughs> um, <sighs> so. I'm not going to be the the, uh, the person of interest in this conversation, mostly because I haven't seen it yet, although I am planning on watching it. <sighs> However, uh, from the things I've heard and from what you, the audience, can hear from the machine's mouth, uh, it's an interesting anime in which the only thing I really know about it is that a bunch of kids get killed in really interesting and creative ways, except it's played completely straight. In, the, in one episode, you have a bunch of children getting crushed by a chandelier. One person survives, goes to, goes to make it out the door, and then gets hit by a pillar and dies. <laughs> so um, uh, I think that's, that, that, that's pretty evident about how insane this anime is. But it's played completely straight, unlike Killing Bites, which is the opposite of played completely straight, in which it knows it's stupid. And, um, before we talk about, like, the story and stuff like that, I just want to bring, uh, a little point of mention to the interesting and actually genuinely cool, like, animal facts. Oh, shit, yeah, this is a fucking nature documentary up here, getting Richard Attenborough out on this shit. Fucking David if Attenborough. Richard Attenborough appears in the dub, I will lose my fucking mind. <laughs> David, get that fucking shit in there. Dude, fucking... The fact is, is that <laughs> they put in so much research for this shit, and I don't understand why. Like, what? I don't get it. Like, why this? Really don't. Why this? Like, out of all the... This is the one show that I would not mind if you just said fuck it and just did some bullshit with the animals. But no, they fuck actually it. We're just gonna, did their research. We're just gonna make some shit up about these animals that's totally not at all factually true, and we're just gonna place it in there. But no, they actually went out of their way to make sure that everything was fucking politically correct. No, 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 no fucking... Uh, wait, politically correct? Politically correct. What? Yeah, yes. did you know that <laughs> that the main character is uh, actually a left-leaning socialist in Japan? It's crazy. Left did you know? Yeah, it, it, it's making a political that... statement. I'm very surprised at the direction it took. Did you know did that you know? Honey Badger Girl is actually running for Senate <laughs> in her hometown state? <laughs> That, that this the show took a turn in its fourth episode. It was it was very interesting. It it was really cool because like the, the, the first three episodes were all about like you know boobs, butts, and uh, insanity, and then the fourth episode gets really into like like internal political strife in Japan. It was a, it was a good choice. Uh, little did I know that apparently gorillas are more conservative than say uh, Chica. What the fuck? Well, yeah, that makes sense. I mean. <laughs> What the fuck are we talking about, man? <laughs> this this podcast isn't about killing bites. Moving on. Okay. okay. Anyways, yeah. Yeah, we're moving off of killing, killing bites. bites. Is good. Watch killing bites. Yeah. Um. If you keep us going about killing bites, we'll be here all day. Yeah, so yeah, let's we'll go. Move on from killing bites. Yeah. In terms of other stuff, uh, Spencer started watching Violet. So is that? Uh, mm. I just yeah. Violet's so good. It does seem to be mm. Violet. I do have my worries, and I'll get to that after Spencer does his thing. But uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh but yeah, Violet okay. is great. Yeah, so uh, Violet Evergarden is beautiful. I'm just gonna start with that. Violet Evergarden is arguably one of the most 
pretty shows I have watched. It's very pretty. This season. It's in very my entire pretty. life. <laughs> it's like the little small little like like natural details they put in is actually incredibly interesting and uh, surprisingly like well done. Um, I heard about Violet Evergarden before I started watching it, obviously, um, because people are like, hey, you should watch Violet Evergarden. Hey, Violet Evergarden is awesome. Uh, a friend of ours got into anime because of Violet Evergarden. Oh, yeah, that was great. So, yeah, that, was um, that was a fucking plot twist if I've ever yeah, seen Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is a friend of ours, by the way, who hates anime, has gone on record saying he hates anime. Like, before and... he started watching Ev Violet Evergarden, he went on record as saying he hates anime with a passion, and that he would never get into it. And look where we are now. Yep, he's watched uh, Violet, he's finished uh, Blood Blockade, and Beyond as well. Mm -hmm. And I got him to watch Bacchano. Uh, so, he's kind of mixed uh, on Bacchano he, right now, but... Yeah, he's kind of mixed, but I mean, Bacchano is one of those shows where you are going to be kind of mixed. Yeah, you love However, it. We're, we're, not gonna be, we're not talking about an anime from like 20... Well, yeah, we're talking about Violet Evergarden. <laughs> Violet Evergarden and its beautiful, beautiful animation and interesting story and character work. Man, you think Germany is a place of importance to Japan? Because they seem to really like Germany and, like, Russia. Yeah, seeing lot. as how we went on the randomizer yesterday and, like, one of, our, of every four shows had Nazis in it. <laughs> Cause... Or Echi. Don't forget Echi. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's true. Uh... Yeah, but Violet Evergarden has been great. I do have a concern, though, and that's mainly after last episode. Last episode was fucking gr great. Yesterday's episode was amazing. But I do have a concern, and that's it's four episodes in. It's going to be 14 episodes long, and it seems to be stagnating a little bit. And it seems to me that uh, what it's going to, hopefully w w this doesn't happen, but what it might turn into is like a, hey, Violet learns a small lesson and solves a problem episode that, every single time. That does seem to be like, the thing that's happening right now. Um, and I don't want it to happen, but... Uh, it's yeah. kind of like the problem I had with uh, Takagi-san. Takagi is that it seemed like they were just gonna do the same format over and over again, yeah. and it would get real stale. Yeah, I finally watched Takaki san by the way. Uh, oh, uh, I, I you, saw the. Yeah, you, you only watched the first episode because it started simul dub. Yeah, it was just dub, and I I really liked it to be honest. I really liked it. Dub is the dub is fantastic for it, by the way. Uh, like absolutely is it? fantastic, fantastic work. Uh, Aaron Dismuke is in it, and he does a fantastic job. Um. Uh, but I'm o over Violet right now. I'm still loving it, so it's not in that big of a concern. Uh, but there's a show that you love a little bit more, isn't there, Matt? Yeah, there is a show that I love a little bit more that's a place Violet, and that's a place further than the universe. Uh, because oh holy my. God, this show! This God show, damn. This show. This show. Remember, Matt. Remember that first episode when we were talking about this, and we had like almost nothing to say about it and we were like oh this is just another fucking slice of life bullshit cute girls doing cute things yeah. there's like seven other shows this season <laughs> doing this why should we care and then it came out of nowhere and fucking blew our socks off yeah i have i have one word for you what antarctica <laughs> antarctica i have another the, the two person words or the place <laughs> oh i have another two words for you dead mom Oh fuck! That's scene. I have. Put I them have together, and you get a place further than the universe. The I have a it. full statement for you. Her mom is dead. Her mom is fucking dead. I'm pretty. Her, if her mom isn't dead, I'm gonna be fucking pissed. Yeah, I'm gonna be very. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. be very. Oh, they. Oh, they have to come up with some extra, turn, extra bullshit. Um, because honestly, yeah. like then you're gonna turn like a show about like uh, about like 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 you know learning and growing as a person and going in on adventures and not letting go and not letting your youth pass you by. And it's going to be like, oh, her mother was alive the entire time and just so survived the, by the, herself. For so like the three entire years. point of this expedition was completely pointless. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I do. Aside from the fact that, like, once again, she would have had to like survive by herself for like two three years, years in Antarctica. Twenty years in Antarctica. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, like, okay, so, but so far, honestly, like, okay, so this show fucking 
keep finding ways to surprise me every single week. And I don't know if it's just the fact that... I don't know if it's the fact that I the, the people doing it are just, like, geniuses or something. But... I have. I think this is this is one of the this is the first time in a long time I have really felt like this is this is, uh, that a studio has given like full reins to the people working on this show because it almost it feels like something of like an auteur project because it's like you have because the writing here is some of the is so fucking good. And so subtle, and so subtle in the right fucking ways too. Like there's little, in there's little moments throughout that it feels real. It feels stupid real, and mm-hmm. and oh, and the animation is gorgeous to look at. Absolutely yeah. done, gorgeous. It's done by Madhouse. A1? Madhouse. It's done by Madhouse. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's Madhouse. You know, Infinite Money. Yeah. Infinite Money. Oh, and they do it's so good. This is ugh, this is the this is over this is overtaking Violet as the best show of the season for me. Probably because I don't know, the writing in this is so good. Um speaking of us uh, uh uh now now it it's I love it when shows are subtle. Although Speaking of not subtle, let's talk. Mm, I darling in the Frank. Let's Ooh, talk about Darling because that's the one I want to talk, talk about. Let's talk about Darling. Let's talk about because, okay because some shit happened because before the at the end of the because of the previous podcast we only saw the first episode and so, yeah we didn't have episode two under our belts did we yeah we only had the first episode oh, we only had boy. the first episode so we were like yeah this is gonna be awesome. Neither of us expected what and was then about to come. Fucking <laughs> sex. It's I sex. Had- yeah, uh, so apparently uh, I missed the memo when I started watching Darling that just everything is a sex metaphor. Everything uh, uh, is a sex metaphor. Down to fucking, let's see, piloting the robot is a sex metaphor. Yeah, the fact that it's a man and a woman have to be a partner is a metaphor. The you have to have the right mech- chemistry. And you, have to, and you have to trust in your partner. The fact that, I don't know, it's it, 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 Piloting is just doggy style. Literally, literally, the way apparently, Fuck. apparently we've been doing mech uh, anime wrong for the wrong. last two decades because fucking apparently the right way to pilot a mech is to just do her from behind. That's just common knowledge now. I mean, I also you love, know what I ain't gonna finish that. Um, I also yeah, you better not do that. Stuff. <laughs> hey, don't do it. <laughs> I also love that um, fucking the main character is like an anti Shinji in some ways because he's just like, hey, hey, let me in the robot. I want to pilot the robot. Just give me a robot, please. And they're like, yeah, sorry, son, I can't leave you. I don't care who I have to fuck. I'll go for the crazy chick if I have to. I love it how this, this, this entire thing, this entire anime is just a metaphor because Hiro can't get it up with other women. That's what it is. Nope. Is that he's just he only he's he's only got chemistry with one girl and one girl only. One girl only. And he tries to pilot with anyone else, it ain't happening. Insane. It's and it, he can get it up momentarily, yep. momentarily oh, yeah, for mo- a bit. Yeah, he got it up a little episode. bit for each ago, but it didn't mm-hmm. last long. Yeah. Think of Yeah, yeah, he got it up for each um, ago. Didn't work. It turns out, turns out he likes dominant women. It seems. Yeah, I, I guess mean, he's a he's a complete sub. He's a complete sub, which is interesting when, when, when if we get to other things like a switch, but so we become Dom and sub. Yeah, yeah. How the hell will that work? Oh my god, that might that might be I'm like very, work with everybody. That's probably like, I have a feel I have a feeling pilot. I have a feeling that's probably what they're gonna talk about in the actual show itself, because Zero Two's extremely dominant. Um She's extremely. like all dominant. So I'm pretty sure that what they do I'm pretty sure when that when you actually get in we because we've never seen how Sterelia, the fucking his, the mech, his her mech is piloted. We've never seen it, so no, never seen it. No. So it's you only okay. You only see it briefly in episode three with uh, Mitsuri. Which, by the way, what a fucking dick briefly. bag! <laughs> I know they they fucking took the dick bag title off of Zerome and, and put Zerome's it on now Mitsuri. A actual person, and I like Zerome now. He actually has feelings exactly. and he cares about his partner. <laughs> He's like the Zerome one guy who like, does. Man, Have you know? Is it, he's like the one, one, only one who does. 
Honestly. Well, I mean, Goro cares about Ichigo. But does Ichigo care yeah, about Goro? Say. No, she okay, wants to bang no Hero. And then, then she wants the Hero D. And then quite fucking, literally the Hero D. Miku and Zorome are like the only two hero. who care about. Like Zorome cares about Miku, and Miku cares about Zorome. It's like a cute relationship, and I like them. <laughs> it's cute. Um, I. I want everything to be happy, but I feel oh, like it's not. This show is going to dark places. I can already tell. Oh, this show is going to get fucked real quick. <laughs> yeah. You thought the Oscar mind rape scene was bad? Wait until <laughs> Trigger gets their hands oh, on Jesus it. Jesus Christ! Let's go. Um, what else? Are, what else are we watching outside of sex? Um, I don't know, man. I've covered outside pretty much all sex? the big shows that I want. Um. To. Oh, can I talk about Pop Team? Oh yeah, pop team. On Fuck. pop team, uh, it's still pop team. So not go not gonna lie though, this week's episode was definitely the weakest. It really was. I mean, it still had some good sketches. I still think episode on two. Yeah, because honestly, episode. outside of wacky racing, that there was wasn't that really was much going on this episode. Dude, the fucking rocky faces that have been rolling. I'm not gonna lie. Wacky racing skeleton. Uh, when, dude, the fact that they had great. Dick Dastardly in it was fucking, like, the creme on the creme. That's crime. his fucking name. The creme of the creme. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> however, can, can we still talk about uh, the dub for episode two in which Sunny Strait oh plays both God. characters? Oh, it wasn't Sunny Strait. It was, it was Sunny Strait. Yeah, yeah, I actually, um, we actually, I actually looked into it because they have the cast lists on the Funimation website. Apparently, really? it was it was Sunny Strait and Mike McFarland. But... Mike McFarlane sounds enough like Sonny Strait, where it completely fooled us to think that they were both fucking Sonny Strait. Oh, okay, now, now, I just want an episode with both characters and Sonny Strait, so I don't sound like a complete idiot in person. Um, I just, I want an episode where one of, both are voiced by Sean Schemmel, but one's Goku and the other's King Kai. I want that's an what I, I want an episode, personally. I want an episode... Uh, that's voiced by uh, that that Chris Abbott returns, but he just uses the same voice for both characters. <laughs> I want an episode where Chris Abbott returns, but he just does all characters, both female and male. He does every single character in both segments. Yeah, yeah, it, he, it's a reference to the fact that the in DBZ and... he plays every character. So it's yeah. a reference to the fact that Chris Abbott voices fucking every character under the sun. Yeah. <laughs> All Might will show up and be like, I am here! <laughs> Midoriya, my boy. Midoriya, my boy. Uh, Midoriya, my boy. Eat my fucking hair! Eat it. Come on, eat kid. this. It's gonna be a superpower. Eat this. <laughs> uh, but, uh... Aw, oh, shit, man. Pass that over. I've wanted to be a superhero my whole life. This shit better be fucking crunchy! Uh, yeah, but... Outside, yeah, but outside of that, Spen <laughs> you're not watching anything else, Spencer. Right? Not this season. He's I mean, watching... I finished Bungo. Yeah, but like uh, that. This yeah, know... in terms of simul yeah. dubs, you're not watching anything else. This, this is dubs, this is nah. just simulcast discussion. Yeah, so, so we'll talk about that discussion? another day. I don't know what else is being simulcast. Uh, a bunch of shit. <laughs> I did see the first episode of Citrus. It was fucking shit. But other than that, oh, oh yeah, that, that was yeah. really bad. You know what? Let's just you would think moving just on. Figured. Yeah, no, yeah. you would think. All I'm saying is, is you would think. That yeah, like you, I think we figured it would be bad. I didn't expect it to be this bad. Like I thought it was at least gonna be like <sighs> a little bit like a like trashy bad, like like the like the type of bad that at the very least you could like kind of enjoy. This was insufferable. This was oh, mm. this was insufferable. It's it's annoying. That's the worst. That's the worst thing about it is that it's annoying. <laughs> that's what makes it. That's, and you know also the fact that basically rape it is yeah whatever it is oh, fucking it's 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 bad it's bad it's really bad uh Ugh. but moving on yeah, move, <laughs> moving moving on, on we're gonna move on to some new stories some big new stories from the past couple oh yay weeks. news thank god yay. <laughs> matt is doing news time yeah. matt is doing um, news time it's news time with matt and shane and also featuring spencer yeah Hi, uh, I don't know the news, so, but I know so, of news. Uh, I have a question for both of you. Do yeah, both of you I have answer. Netflix? I yes, do I do, Matt. Why do you ask? Are you excited you to have Netflix for? Are you excited to have some new anime on Netflix? New Netflix anime. Tell me more. Well, what genres? 
Well, I'm I am excited to tell you that uh, on yes, no, that yes, for, this is also for those who don't know that yesterday Kakaguri was released on the Netflix. Of, oh yeah, took long yeah. and finally uh, released. Yeah, it took fucking long enough for them to put it on there. Is that the but one with the fucking like? It's the, Buckland and all that. It's the gambling. It's anime. the one. It's it's yes. it's etchy gambling anime. Yeah, where where gambling. girl gets orgasm from winning gambling. Well, yeah. Guess what I'm watching after this podcast is done. <laughs> guess what I'm binging as soon as we hit the stop button. Yeah. They all, uh, uh, and also I learned in the article it mentions I didn't know this, but apparently a second season of this has been greenlit. So there is oh. there will be a second <laughs> season coming in the near future. No release date has. Well, we'll we'll see it released on Netflix in three years. No, but the big Netflix, but the, the <laughs> but we have two big pieces of Netflix news. We're gonna cover the the smaller one for the smaller of the two big ones first. First one is that the live action Fullmetal Alchemist has been purchased by Netflix mm-hmm. itself and will be released on Netflix for in for North American audiences on February nineteenth. Uh, yep. According to the uh, article, it says Netflix shared a list of titles that in- will include that uh, will premiere in February with various news outlets on Tuesday. That list includes the live-action Fullmetal Alchemist film slated for release on February 19th as a Netflix original. The film initially opened at the Tokyo International Film Festival on October 25th for the world premiere before opening in Japan on December 1st. The film was also screening in Japan on IMAX and 4DX screens, making it one of the few. Uh, J- Japanese films that be released in IMAX, and the film topped the Japanese box office in its first weekend. So, uh, as you can tell from last week, me and Shane are huge fans of Full Metal Alchemist, um, and as is Spencer. As is Spencer. Uh, so we've actually been looking forward to the live action version for quite a while, or dreading it, depending on who you, uh, how you, <laughs> how your thoughts are. I heard it was actually pretty decent. Yeah, so, so I heard. So yeah, I, heard I'm, it okay. I, I wouldn't mind watching it. Yeah, it comes out on the nineteenth. When in, since it comes out on the nineteenth, when it does come out, we will be covering it on the show. So that is two weeks from this Monday. So yeah. So probably in a so, yeah. so probably in a couple of podcasts we will be covering our thoughts on the live action Fullmetal Alchemist. Uh, it will, and uh, we'll give you our thoughts on whether or not we think it's worth your time to watch. Uh, but other, I am pretty excited to watch it because uh, I am a huge Fullmetal Alchemist fan. We haven't had any Fullmetal Alchemist content for like half a decade so this is a good yeah for almost uh, yeah for almost 10 years almost it's 10 been, years yeah. Yeah, almost it's been nine years since brotherhood came out so yeah so it's been a while since i've seen any good any uh from alchemist content maybe this will uh give us the uh, give us a more former alchemist who knows um uh, but the big, but the big piece of Netflix news is one that uh made the rounds heavily la- uh the past couple weeks uh <laughs> In that Netflix has uh, has uh, formed a comprehensive business alliance, or like a basic co-production with Production IG, Studio Bones, and Wit Studio, in order to co-produce anime and that will uh, or co-produce anime. According to the article, it says streaming service Netflix announced a comprehensive business alliance with anime studios Production IG, Bones, and Wit on Wednesday. With this tie-up, Netflix will co-produce anime episodes from the studios and stream them in 190 different countries. The alliance includes both Production IG and its sister anime studio in the IG Port Wit Studio. IG Port is also the parent company of anime studios Zbeck and Student Signal MD, but Netflix did not mention those studios in its announcement. With this collaboration, Netflix aims to strengthen the animation lineup for its members worldwide with High quality anime from Japan. And Netflix describes the relationship as a win 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 for its members, anime creators, and anime production. This is big. This is big fucking. Yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is huge. This is huge. Cause Netflix is taking over the world right now. Uh, they have, they, uh, they have movies going on. They have the, they have the live action shows. Apparently, they're trying to get into gaming too. Um, uh, but uh, for a while now, they've been trying to get into anime. So far, they've only really focused on licensing stuff like Violet Evergarden, Seven Deadly Sins, Knights of Cydonia, uh the new Godzilla film that came out recently. Uh, but with uh, but that all changed with uh, Devilman Crybaby, which came out last month. 
um, on Netflix, and now and now apparently that did really well for this for Netflix. So now they're making deals with a bunch of studios, mainly mainly Bones, IG, and Wit, to make original anime that is specifically for the Netflix model. Um, what are your thoughts on this, uh, Spencer and Shane? Because I'm pretty sure you might have some stuff to say about it. Spencer, you go first. Spencer? Spencer. <laughs> okay, so Spencer is dead. So we'll move on to Shane. <laughs> okay, well, um, I think this is huge news. Uh, I think... I agree with the article. It says it's a win-win-win because, like, you know, with studios like Bones and fucking Wit and uh, Production IG and all that, like, there's no way that this could be bad. This just means that we're going to be getting more good anime. The only thing that worries me is Netflix itself because of their ever-infamous release now it, now the thing is is that they're co they're models. co-producing all all these anime meaning that it's going to be made for the Netflix model in particular which means that it's going to be like Devil May Cry Baby where all the episodes are released at once more than likely so if that's the if case if they do if they do that if that's the case then that'll work but I oh mean Oh my Spencer's alive. I am alive. Hi, I'm sorry. I I was uh Listening intently, but uh, it's probably made for it was they're going to be made for the model. That also questions because that I'm my question is is that they got production IG in here, and I have a feeling there's a uh, and right now in, if Netflix has a deal with them, that could possibly mean that a lot of the upcoming anime like from all of these studios are going to be for Netflix only. Because I know Bones has a Netflix, like a Netflix show called Ico, which comes out in March, um, and uh, so does Production IG. It's got Sword Guy coming out in March as well. So, if those do well, could we start to see a change in the anime industry as a whole, where they start relying on streaming a lot more? I mean, honestly, I wouldn't be upset if they relied more on a, a streaming business model because we've seen obviously over the course of the last few years we've seen the rise of the anime streaming services like Crunchyroll and Funimation Now and even High Dive, High Dive is, is starting to, uh, to get its bearings yeah. yeah so like the I feel like anime has only flourished from these streaming services so if they decided to yeah, go same. a more streaming business model I wouldn't be too upset about it because it would just mean that this would reach the widest audience possible, well, which I mean, just means good things for the industry. So let's take an example of you know why the streaming service works so well, and let's go back to the old days of like the early two thousands with Naruto. Uh, <laughs> since we're mm -hmm. since we're Canadian, uh, mm -hmm. it, it it would appear for us on YTV. However, mm -hmm. it would appear on YTV at about six o'clock in the morning. So, in order to watch your... I, I remember when Naruto made the switch from being at 9.30 at night to 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, and at that point, I was like, I'm not going to get up at 6 in the morning to watch Naruto. However, they... However, Sasuke just got captured and they're going to go after him, so I kind of have to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. People, God, people say that nobody watches anime, but considering they put them on at like 3 a.m. in the morning, of course nobody fucking watches it because it's on at 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. So... Because only the hardcore of the hardcore would stay up till 2 a.m. to watch Space Dandy on fucking Toonami. Oh, the fact that One Piece is on at 3.30 a.m. Exactly. Toonami. So, that's why I believe that the streaming system works really well, because I can go, hmm... What day is it? Oh, it's Friday? New episode of, uh, Darling, I think it is? Is it on Fridays? Yeah, Darling, um, Saturday. Saturday? Saturday. Saturdays? Mm -hmm. Saturdays, okay. Uh, what the hell's on Friday? Killing Bites, dude. Killing Bites is Friday, yeah. Um, so it's like, oh man, I can't wait to watch the new episode of Killing Bites. Except if it was on at, like, 3 o'clock this morning, I'd be like, you know what, fuck that, I'm not gonna watch it. But now I can just go do-do-do, and I can go on to... 
I'm not uh, shit. It's, you this go on Amazon perfect. because that's where it's on. There you yeah, go. You go on Amazon Prime Video to watch it legally. Shout out to my friends that that know more than I do about legal anime streaming sites. <laughs> because uh, we here at the Gap only endorse legal we only streaming endorse sites. Legal anime we do sites. not endorse piracy. No, we do not. If you need to, uh, I mean. Spend the four ninety nine to get Crunchyroll and watch anime at hours after it appears in Japan. Uh, use promo code The Gap for zero dollars off. <laughs> I already did this joke for the diff. It's zero dose. I did it last episode. I was like, man, if you want to watch any of the anime we've talked about in this episode, you can go to crunchyrollcom slash The Gap to get your thirty day free trial. <laughs> I just added not to the an joke. actual sponsorship. Yeah, Don't do not, that. That link doesn't please. exist. Uh, but if you want to sponsor us, mm. Crunchyroll, I'm always down for uh, sponsorship. sponsorship. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but, uh, if if almost if, if Nintendo, Jesus Christ, if Netflix can, uh, if Nintendo it gets into anime, like I want really to see Zelda anime style. Yeah, binge style anime. Then I'm all for anything for bones. Hey, if Nintendo made a fucking anime streaming service for, like, the Switch or something, sign me the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, please. I don't uh, care how much it costs. Just make a fucking Donkey Kong Country anime. I'll watch that I'll shit. I'll literally watch anything. Like, yeah. anything. Like, if they made... Like, we know, we Matt. We know, Matt. We know. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Okay. But, um... Yeah. Other th- uh, the thing I'm most interested in, though, is that I'm wondering if the new Ghost in the Shell is part of this deal. Because we haven't, because it wasn't, because there's a new Ghost in the Shell anime coming. We haven't heard like, anything about right. it since like the beginning of last year. So I'm like, isn't it a um, isn't it a new season of Standalone Complex? We don't know. Or is it something? It's different? the same director as Standalone Complex. So I would not be surprised if it's a re- if it's a return of Standalone Complex. If it is, Woo! so um, Woo! because the, because the other day I got a notification from Netflix saying, hey, we just added Ghost in the Shell, and I'm like. What? It's probably the movie. And I was like, they did not. So I went on, and yeah, it's it's the new one. So. Yeah, it's 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 the it's movie, the which isn't action. actually that bad. It's just not good either. It's just kind of meh. So, but they got my fucking expectations up, thinking it might have been the original, and I'm like, oh man, finally. But no, never yeah. Mind. But other than that, uh, yeah. So Netflix is co-producing anime. That's gonna be uh, we'll wait and see what happens. We'll wait. We'll wait and see how that uh, all plays out. Speaking of stuff that I want to see, how I, I, I kind of want to see, but don't want to see, and by don't want to see, I mean it's probably going to be trash, but I'm going to read it anyways because I hate myself. Uh, do all y'all read Fairy Tale or watch Fairy Tale? No. No. Um, yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, okay. So I watched up until the Jalel arc, and then I stopped. I watched two episodes in like 2010, and then gave up. Good. So, I mean, I don't blame you. Good. Fairy tale fans don't get upset at me. Look, it's, it's, <laughs> fairy tale is not good, but me and Shane mm. enjoy it anyways. Uh, but the author of yeah, fairy tale uh, teased some details about his new mo- about his new work that is coming up. Uh, fairy tale oh, manga God, creator no. Hiro Mashima posted on Twitter on Saturday more details about his planned new work. Mashima said while he was at the Angome uh, International Comics Festival in France, uh, as expected, the most frequently asked question was about his new manga, which was announced after the like v- directly after the end of Fairy Tale uh, co- uh, last year. He then teased three new things about his work. It will be a new form of fantasy that he's never done before. Jokes will be a, more of a challenge than before. And that Plu, which is his character from Rave Master, will again make an appearance similar to Fairy Tale. Uh, and that, and that, more, and that he also mentioned is that it will more than likely start sometime this year, although he is not sure exactly when. Uh, the 45th Anglomay International Comics Award Festival actually awarded Mashima with the FOB Special Award on Friday, on Friday, which is dedicated to manga uh, manga artists with a large. A manga artist, comic artist, or just artist in general with a large influence on the industry. So, no, so, got- uh, uh, he, <laughs> Mashima's back. <laughs> yeah, hell, I mean, I'll give this a shot because really the only one of the only reasons why I didn't really get the fairy tale was one, there's like 
800 episodes <laughs> to there's like a thousand chapters and I don't have the time, energy, or love to see about 800 episodes of people crying for no goddamn I'm reason. I'm sorry, is this One Piece? <laughs> oh. Yeah, but actually in comparison, Fairy Tale has a lot less shit, yeah, but it's yeah, still yeah. really long. Yeah, Fairy Tale is long. It has a lot less shit, though. In terms of Fairy I have a love-hate relationship, personally, with Fairy Tale. Cause I en- Same! Because I enjoy it. Uh, quite a bit, actually. I enjoy it quite a bit, even if I recognize that it's not really that good. Uh, but no, yeah, yeah, it's not really that good. But I have a love-hate relationship because when I do watch it or read it, I never hated myself watching it. I never hated myself reading it I can, either. I can agree with that. I never Let hated myself. Forget. I had fun watching. Like uh, Shade, you could you could uh, probably agree with this. Is I that can, after? You, yeah, I can I can agree with you there. Yeah, as you watch like, it, um, you don't you uh, you enjoy watch. It's at least enjoyable to watch. Like it's not. Like, well, when I sit there and watch Fairy Tale, and I see the dumb shit that happens on screen, I'm like, I know somewhere in my head that this is dumb, and that this isn't good. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it's bad, though, because I'm actually having fun watching it. This is weird. Yeah, it, it's fun to watch. I think I... I th- I think uh, in ter- it, Mashima's real strength as a writer comes from character stuff though, because his because the, the cast of Fairy Tale is the singular strongest strength of that show. Uh, but good Christ Almighty, stop crying! <laughs> stop. They cry God, a lot. it's not that sad. You literally just lost a like Christ. All you need battle. to do is make Natsu angry, and he will be anyone. <laughs> So why the fuck you crying? Why are you crying? The power of friendship will not save you because you have a just dragon give on Natsu, your side. Just give Natsu, just give Natsu the power dragon. of friendship and a rage boost, and you're good. Exactly. Stop fucking crying. Just kick that motherfucker in the shins, and you can beat anybody. Just kick him while he's down, and then blow fire on just, him. Just, just fucking it walk always up to works. Lucy and grab her in the ass, and there you go. Bada bing, bada boom, you got yourself a Just watch dragon. Lucy basically take her shirt off Every. because she's covered in leeches and just... There you go. <laughs> there you go. Man, I, I really want to see the waveform for what the fuck you just did there. It's very spiky. <laughs> it must be. So Here, let, me, let me see if I can capture a picture of this real quick before it goes off that, screen. Screen cap that waveform, send it to Matt. You can edit it's it very, in. Oh no! Very oh no! Sp- oh, it's gone. I didn't. Oh, I didn't get it. Uh, oh god sp- damn it! Oh, so sad. Um, damn it! But no, so uh, fairy tale. Uh, fucking Christ, man. I, I, uh, whoo, fantasy I- anime. I'm interested to see the the thing I'm most interested though is that he said new form of fantasy he's never done before. He's done one yeah. type of fantasy, and that's like the dungeon crawls type of fantasy. The same as Rave Master. Does that mean it'll tale. actually be good? Who knows? Um. Uh, who knows? Uh, who knows? Uh, but we'll have to wait and see, considering that's all we f- we know fuck all else about it. Uh, moving on to Ooh. to or to more manga stuff. Uh, this is more just a bi- this is uh, an end of an era. Gintama is finally wrapping up, uh, reaching the it has reached the climax of its final arc, and will probably wrap up in the next couple of weeks. Um, according to the article, the news ninth issue of Susia's Weekly Shonen Jump magazine revealed on Monday that Hikiki Sorachi's Gintama manga will reach the climax of the final arc in the t- magazine's tenth issue, which will ship on February 5th. So as we're recording this in three days. Um, the the tenth issue of Weekly Shonen Jump is also celebrating the 14th anniversary of the manga. Gintama will be featured on the cover of the issue in the chapter on February 5th will co- uh, c- include a color page. I am a huge fan of Gintama, so this makes me very sad. Gintama's the one with the I... big-ass doll, right? There's a... what? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've never seen or read Gintama, so I don't really care, but I know that it's fucking hilarious, mm-hmm. and I should probably get on that shit, it's true. but it's fucking I've seen, long. I've seen, like, like screenshots and, like, gift sets of, uh, Gintama, and it looks hilarious and it looks great. The problem is is that it's way too long and 
recently I've only been watching anime that has like 12 episodes to 24 episodes. Oh, well, that's a nice, nice length. Nice that's a length. nice, length. good length. You can get it done in a couple of days, maybe a week. I don't have enough time and... to sit down and watch slash read until I get married. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's, that's how I what feel is about this, One Piece. What is this, One Piece? You started reading One Piece. That's though, how I so feel you about you One Piece, because I literally just shit. started reading the manga recently, and I'm only fucking 14 chapters in to, like, almost 900, and I'm like, I'm going to be reading this for the next seven years. You're going to be reading this <laughs> And then there's going to be more die. after that. By the time I catch up, there's already going to be another four years of stuff that I need to get on. Yeah. And by the time I finish that, it's, it's just a never-ending. It's a never-ending cycle. Insert the fucking curb your enthusiasm theme. <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, but yeah, Game Tom is wrapping up, and I'm, that makes me sad. But in news that all of us care about, um, uh, we've it? been anxiously awaiting the the announcement of when the hell My Hero Season Three is going to come out. <sighs> I know well, what you're talking about. Studio, well, Studio Bones, in all of their might and majesty, announced that My Hero Season 3 will premiere on April 7th of this year. Ooh. Uh, manga artist uh, Betancourt posted the cover for the third My Hero Academia Vigilante spin off manga volume on Tuesday. The wraparound jacket ban on the manga volume reveals that the third season anime. Uh, the first season of the anime, well, based on uh, on My Hero Academia, will premiere on April 7th. As previously announced, it will remain in the 5.30 time slot at, on, on Saturdays, as before. Funimation will continue to stream it, the se- series, same the, uh, the entire staff from the first season, uh, first and second season, will be returning to work on the series. Yes, fucking please. Do we have a do we have a time uh, time frame on the dub? Or? Uh, there was no announcement on whatever simul dub is happening. We probably won't have that for a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, so we ha- we'll have to wait for, for like a, yeah, for like a couple weeks after it airs, probably. Mm-hmm. But Ooh. can't wait. Oh, I'm so I li- excited. I literally cannot Legit. wait. Damn, think about that. April seventh. That's like two months from now it's only two months away it is holy shit it is. the season it just ended in october away, but i actually forgot god that it damn was, you know it went february march i thought it went february april i just want my hero that's all i want like i am fucking, willing to like, get think rid about of it. the month of march like to get my, my hero quicker he- like my hero fucking headlines the the fucking uh spring season Ooh. Headlines the spring season, and if you look at the spring season, it is the, it is headlining an already stacked season with the return of Steins Gate, the return of Full Metal Panic, the return of a bunch of like a bunch of other stuff coming out. Then Food Wars is coming. Season the April next this year is fucking stacked. So the fact that My Hero, oh man, is there too just adds like even more. Uh I stuff can't wait. Cake. Uh, I can't. I can't I wait. Think wait about it. We're gonna get sign. fucking. I can't wait till we go through all the anime for the next for eight for frame because that's gonna be it. Like we're finally gonna get so many things animated. We're gonna get fucking Tokiomi Shadow in the Forest. We're gonna get fucking Deku versus Muscular. Million oh, spoilers percent for season smash. Three, by the way. Spoilers for upcoming season three. By the way. Oh, spoilers. Oh, okay. Okay. I was literally holding my tongue and like I don't want to talk about spoilers. Since spoilers, about spoilers. No, literally, we don't. Okay. We don't care about spoilers Yo, on this show. Go let's, nuts. Let's let's talk about the big one. Let's talk about the mighty, the man, the mighty the, man, no, not, the United might, States, fucking, the, the man, United the myth, the legend, States the of fucking the human smash. rabbit, <laughs> the fucking United States of Smash. Oh the, my all for god, one. dude! Yeah. If the it's Bones. I have no doubt this is going to be amazing. I have no doubt this is going to be like Deku versus Todoroki levels of like, but in like a worthy animation. But in like a quick like seven second, it. I'm expecting it to be like when he used the the Detroit Smash on Nomu and how oh. cool that looked. But times that by like seven million, and that's going to be the United States Smash. I expect there yeah, I have- to be like smash cuts of like him talking with Deku and like reliving like parts of his life as he connects with with, with one for all and fucking launches oh god I'm, I'm, oh, I'm so excited 
Yeah, oh. fucking... It's gonna be absolutely amazing. Uh, speaking of Bones anime, um, this is another Bones show that is highly well-regarded. Uh, who here has seen Mob Psycho 100? I am planning on watching it today. That noise means that I have. Yeah, that noise means he has. Yeah. Uh, well, we've gotten a lot of hints over the past, uh, uh the past, like, a <laughs> couple years that about more Mob Psycho 100, and it's basically confirmed that we are getting more Mob Psycho 100, but it's not exactly what we expected. Uh, uh, the official website for Bones television anime of One's Mob Psycho 100 manga revealed a new visual for Mob Psycho 100, for the Mob Psycho 100 Reagan OVA. Uh, it will be, uh, it will be a 60-minute compilation that will screen that, that, that will center on Mob's master Reagan as he gets the idea to write an autobiography. It will compile the original anime, but will be about 25% new footage, meaning that it's going to have more new footage than expected. I think people initially themed. They also hinted. The big news, though, is that they hinted that after this, they're still going to be working on more Mob Psycho. So season two, maybe. Possibly. Fucking, I want season two. Possibly. Uh, but, yeah, we're getting, a an OVA for Mob Psycho. I mean, at least, at least we're getting more Mob Psycho, which is always never a bad thing. And, it's revolving around Reagan, the best fucking character. The, the, I the, the boy. I haven't seen it, but I heard it is really, really good, so I'll probably be watching it tonight. How many episodes? Basically, if you like, if you like One Punch, you're gonna like Mob Psycho. I do like One Punch, so I guess I like Mob Psycho. Basically, basically anything from one, honestly. One is, is pretty like consistently fucking fan- incredible. They're pretty f- consistently fantastic. So whoever, whoever you are, keep on living. You magnificent bastard. Whatever, wh- whoever you are, one, if that even is your real name. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. So, but Mob Psycho 100 is. I, I I love it so much. Uh, um, the I, it's fucking we got, great. Yeah, we got one more piece of news. Uh, because this okay. Uh, this wasn't initially going to be part of the podcast actually, but because it dropped literally hours before we recorded, uh, I would decided to bring it in. Um, Sunrise oh, okay. decided to come out and say that that out of fucking nowhere we have a new Gundam coming this spring. Um, fuck it. Uh, but it's a uh, it's uh. Gund- it, it, it's the new show. It's a uh, part of the Gundam uh, Build Fighter series called it's called Gundam Build Divers. Uh, Sunrise opened a website on Friday to reveal Gundam Build Divers, a new television series set in the Gundam Build Fighters franchise that will premiere in the premiere this spring. Uh, there will there's a there is a, there's also a prologue anime which you can watch online on YouTube that's 14 minutes long. Um, that basically sets up the entire show. If you haven't seen it, I actually highly recommend you watch it because it's really well animated and tons of tons of fun. Um, uh, I don't know how well both of you are versed in Gundam. Dude, uh, uh, Gundam is your shit, not mine, sadly. <laughs> yeah. So you go uh, ahead, the floor is yours. Talk for like 15 <laughs> minutes about Iron Blooded Orphans. <laughs> I played was not even the best Gundam though. Uh, but it's not. Yeah. But it's the first one that came to mind. It's, it's a damn good Gundam though. Um, there's a uh, Gundam is one of my favorite uh, tone anime series. Uh, we we'll probably will be at some point. We probably will be covering a Gundam show on the featured anime. I don't know when, but we will at some point. And the Gundam Build Fighters series is a perfect example of something that should suck. But it's not. It's basically a. It's basically think uh like Yu-Gi-Oh, but with Gunpla, like the little model Gundam model kits. Like it's a uh, basically in this world, the Gunpla you can like put into a you you can they basically they can control them and they can like fight them in like kind of like a tournament type thing. So think like uh, was it like? Robot wars or stuff like that, like where people like put the like make the robots and they put them in the arena and shit, like that type of shit. But, but with Gundams? like, but with like miniature Gundams. Uh, damn. It's it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah, the it should suck, but it's actually really fucking awesome. It's actually really fucking cool. Um, probably probably because 
it it's both respectful of the of the legacy of Gundam while also not taking itself too seriously. So it's it's also a good start. It's actually a good start to Gundam because you don't you don't have to have seen any of the other previous Gundams to enjoy uh, the Gundam Build Fighter series. Uh, so it's a great place to get into Gundam if anyone wants to get into Gundam, uh, especially considering that there's a bajillion Gundam. So, uh, but other than that. Uh, it, it, that will also be premiering in the spring, airing alongside My Hero, uh, Food Wars, uh, Full One Hope Panic, Steins Gate, and a bajillion other shows. Oh, and Persona 5 as well. Yep, uh, oh, Christ, out. Persona 5, the animation. Yeah. The animation. Dude, fucking spring is going to be... Spring's going to be, uh, no pun intended, pretty hot. <laughs> it's going to be pretty hot. Um, and with that, we're done with the news for the week. Hey. And, we, and that means we move that on to now we're done the first half of the show. We can move on to our featured anime discussion. Hey Matthew, yes, that was quite a good segue. Speaking of sunrise, what anime is t- is this week? Speaking featured of sunrise, anime? speaking of sunrise, our speaking featured of anime sunrise. of the po- uh, the featured anime of the podcast is one that is beloved by a large, large section of the anime community as one of the possibly one of the best, if not the best, anime ever made. Uh, I mean, it is it it was a highly influential Yeah. It was a highly extremely well received by all of us. Yeah. It was a highly influential show, uh, not just in Japan, but also in North America, and has influenced countless upon countless of anime, movies, games, T V shows, um and has defined, and arguably defined, along with Dragon Ball Z, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and Trigun, has defined a uh, a uh, generation of anime fans. We're talk. We're going to be, of course, talking about the anime classic that is Cowboy Bebop, uh, directed by Shishiro Watanabe and written by Keiko Nobumoto. Uh, it is. Uh, Cowboy Bebop and fuck, <laughs> fuck yeah. Um, Cowboy Bebop initially aired from April third, nineteen ninety eight, to April twenty third, nineteen ninety nine, and was tw- and lasted for twenty six episodes. It's an anime original, unlike most shows, and follows the misadventures of the crew of the of the Bebop. A group, uh, uh, we have Spike, Jet, Fay, Ein, and Ed. A group of misfit bounty hunters who suck at their jobs. They are and that's really the show. bad at it. They, they <laughs> are, dead, dead. it's just terrible at their jobs. <laughs> real, real bad. I am real. genuinely surprised on the episode where they actually get a bounty, because I'm like, <laughs> how? How did you get that bounty? I think... <laughs> this never happened. I think of the 26 episodes, I think, like, maybe... Four of them, they actually get a bounty, and the yep, other four. twenty-two only, episodes yeah, only are, four bounties. Yeah, and the the other twenty-two episodes are them not having any food, not having any fuel, not having both, or going on wacky adventures looking for a Betamax tape. Yeah, it it makes me wonder how are these people still alive? How have they not starved to death? Uh, but how uh, yeah, does everything happen? Yeah, as you can tell. This will be a spoiler-filled discussion on Cowboy Bebop. So if you have not seen Cowboy Bebop, please, please, what are you doing? Go do yourself a favor and watch Cowboy Bebop. If you have not watched Cowboy Bebop and wish to join in the discussion, uh, you can watch it on Crunchyroll in Japanese subtitled or on Funimation Now with the English dub. I would go watch it. What is wrong with I you would if you haven't seen this? Highly recommend the dub. Highly recommend. Oh, it is yeah, yeah. quintessential, honestly one of the best dubs ever made. Uh I can't argue with that, Steve honestly. Blum I I gotta agree. Really kind of kicked off I don't really kicked off his career with Spike. Um now correct yeah, me it, if I'm wrong, but I think a lot of the other actors had like the Ava syndrome where they didn't do a lot after Oh Bebop. yeah, yeah, yeah! Because they got too well known for uh, be- for Bebop. Literally, Sp- literally, Steven Steven Bloom was the only one who went on to do much. 
Uh, with the except, yeah. I mean, Faye, Wendy Lee's done stuff here and there. She's in Blue Exorcist. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But other than that, uh, she doesn't. They don't re- like. Uh, I haven't seen Jet's actor in years. I haven't seen Ed's actor in years. Um, uh, fucking Stephen Blum is really much the only one who's really gone on to be a big name talent, and not just in anime. Stephen but in Bloom sports is in, in general. fucking everything. Yeah. Uh, like he's everywhere. Yeah, but um, so we're gonna go through a similar structure as we had last week. Um, uh, so uh, I Spencer, what were we, uh, Spencer and Shane, what were your initial impressions of Cowboy Bebop after you first watched it? Let's start with Spencer because he's the guest here. What okay, were your so impressions? I... And we know Spencer's gonna ramble for a while. So, so. yeah. Um, so my, I initially watched Cowboy Bebop in 2014, I wanted to say, 2015, 2016, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, I had never seen it. I had heard about Cowboy Bebop repeatedly on forums, on websites, on top 10 best anime lists, from Matt himself in high school, from Shane when I went to university. Like, everybody was talking about it. Like, they were all... Painting the, the the name of Cowboy Bebop as like the greatest anime, and initially I was kind of skeptical because I'm like, it can't be that good. I mean, if an anime was that good, obviously I would have either either I would have seen it or I would have like heard more about it. It would have been like something I was forced to watch. So, a little background get about me, which explains what I'm going to say later on. Uh, I'm a big fan of westerns. Um, Matthew and Shane can attest to that. I he love, never shuts up. I never shut that. up. I love westerns. I want to be a cowboy. I, I want to go back to the 1880s. Frontier, I love this stuff. So when Matt was explaining it to me and he's like, it's um, it's basically it's a western in space. It's a space western. I immediately was on board and like, well, I, I know what I'm going to do. So I sat down and I watched the first six or seven episodes in one day. Uh, and I'm like, okay, it's good. It's it's really really good. I mean, story is semi like disjointed, but the, the animation's all good. You know, the music's really amazing. Um, for 1998, this looks amazing. And then I finished the anime, and I was like, this is the best anime I have ever watched. This probably will be in my top three for the rest of my life, for the remainder of my time on this earth. I will sing the praises of Watanabe's Cowboy Bebop because it's that fucking good, dude. Every episode has a different genre and theme, and it all fits together. It's it's fucking amazing. All right, uh, well said, Spencer. Uh, but Shane, uh, how are you going to follow that? Up? Uh, what were your initial well, okay. impressions after you first watched the show? Because you rewatched the show. In prep for this podcast, yeah. um, I'm gonna say most of my opinions are based on my rewatch because I had initially watched it when I was really young, uh, young enough to not really remember a whole lot of it going into this podcast. So most of my opinions are based on my rewatch, but my initial impressions when I was younger, I was like, "This is cool, cowboy shooty shooty bang bang. This is fun. I like it," because. Kids are dumb. Um, rewatching it as an adult, and I, I have to agree with Spencer that this is one of, if not the best anime I've ever seen. Definitely top five material. Maybe not top three for me personally, because there are a few shows that I either enjoy a little bit more or have bias towards, but definitely top five. I have to reshuffle my entire top ten list after rewatching this, because good goddamn. Um... I agree with Spencer that at the beginning, the plot seems a little disjointed, but I think that the way Watanabe directed this, it really revels in its disjointed feel, because the characters themselves are incredibly disjointed and broken, mm-hmm. and I really, I did, I wasn't a fan of the episodic nature at first, but by the end, I really dug the way they did it. Because each episode can be seen as its own 
individual story, but at the same time, they are all somewhat interwoven with each other. Like, they're all connected, but at the same time, they aren't. And I really like that model. I really like that concept. Um, because it makes the show, it makes every episode feel unique. It, it makes every episode stand out from one another. Um, and good God, the, the cast in this fucking show, the characters are, oh, fuck. They're, they're so good. Some of the best characters that I've ever had the pleasure of watching in an anime. Um, all the, all the crew of the Bebop, fucking Spike, Jet, Faye, Ed, Ein, they're all amazing characters in their own right, and they all have their own really deep character development that makes them really endearing and likable. Like that, there's not a there's not a single character in the show that I really don't like. Uh, even the side characters and some of the villains are really well done. Um, the tone of the show is great. I love how adult it is right off the bat. It doesn't hold back any punches. Um, animation's fucking amazing. For 1998, this looks better than most shows nowadays, and that's saying something. Um, I, I love this show. I love everything about it. I really have nothing bad to say. I have no criticisms with the show. It's just amazing from start to finish. I can't praise it enough. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to me, Bebop, Bebop, I first watched when I was around 12. Uh, it was one of the first major shows, it was like Formula Alchemist, where I was, it was one of those shows that everyone was like, yo, if you're gonna watch an anime, watch Cowboy Bebop. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna watch Cowboy Bebop. And as I was watching it, I didn't strike me until I think about, I want to say it was around the episode of uh, Black Dog Serenade, um, which is episode 16, that it, I think it struck me just how good Bebop actually is. And one and one of the, th and I, as I've rewatched it a co like several times since I finished it. Before, uh, in the past, and it's one of those shows that I think a lot of shows on rewatches do suffer because some shows rely too much on plot twists, or some shows rely too much on the knowledge of not of like not knowing what's coming next. Bebop revels in the fact that it doesn't matter if you've seen an episode before. The fact is that since each episode is so self-contained and so, like, in its own little world anyways, that you can literally just jump in whenever, like, to an episode and be like, oh, I remember this episode. This episode was great. And you watch it, and it's fucking great. Like, there's not a sing Like, one of the big things I noticed was that there's not a singular episode of Bebop that is a bad episode. So much care. Nope. It, so nope. Nope. so much care is taken into making every episode seem relevant, even if it's not. Like there's some episodes in it that technically don't need to be there. They're not. They don't. There's no real character development. There's no real plot movement. There's no like real stakes at, at all. But the, the the so much care is given to each episode and each story that it almost feels like. That, that, uh, that, honestly, I feel like Watanabe is holding out. I'm pretty sure that if Bebop was gonna, was longer, like, like, let's say Watanabe wanted to do 50 episodes of Bebop instead of 26 initially, I think he could have done it. I think he could have yeah. done it, because there's a, because there's so, because it's obvious he has a, so much passion for this project, and it, that passion oozes in every frame of this damn show in every in every single line and every single beat it every it, it everything just it feels right everything just clicks it there's nothing about it that really just doesn't work at all and to me that's the sign of something bebop is one of the only two anime i'd regard as perfect 
There's only two anime I'd regard as perfect. The other one, I... No, no the other one is Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood. Uh, those... T uh, but this one in particular, I think Bebop... I think what makes I I think Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood had the advantage of coming off of source material that was already arguably perfect. So it had it, all it really needed to do was follow the damn source material. Uh, Bebop was an original project. Nope. And this was this came out at a time where Bebop came out at a time where anime uh, was in the midst of a renaissance. Thanks to uh, thanks to stuff like uh, Ghost in the Shell, uh, Ava, and uh, dry and uh, the and uh, a bunch of other stuff, and a bunch of more adult anime that was coming out at the time, um, and Bebop was Bebop was greenlit on the sole idea that Sunrise needed a more adult show while they had the Gundam on at an earlier time so they can make the money through that. And it's obvious that this is what hap Bebop is what happens when you give an auteur full creative control on something. That's what happens. And honestly, yeah, it's fucking perfect. <laughs> so. I can't argue yeah, with that. Yeah. So. I, I really can't. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, now time to do some impossible shit with Bebop. Uh, oh god, to, please, no. Yeah, yes, yes, it is happening. I want you guys to both pick your favorite character from Bebop. Mm. <laughs> oh, it does not need to be god. part of the main four, uh, four, by the way. It could be any of the side, it could be side characters, one-off characters, it could be uh, villains, it can be any anyone from Bebop. It's like asking me to pick my favorite child, man. <sighs> okay, um, you know what? I I went first, so it would only be kind of me to let Shane go first this time. Oh come on, yeah, Shane, man! Don't fucking Shane, do this to you're me. Up first. <laughs> ah, God damn it! This is this is one of the most difficult choices because, like I said earlier. There's literally no character that I don't like in this show. Yeah. Honestly. Being being honest with you guys, I did there was not a character that I met over the course of this show that I, I specifically stopped and said, you know what? I don't like them. I don't like what they're doing. I don't like their personality. That didn't happen. So this is like impossible for me. Um God. Hey, I'll, I'll I'll give you a couple mi more minutes to think because I think I got my answer. All right, what's your okay. answer? Okay, so much like Shane, this is actually really difficult for me because there's not a single character that I don't like. There is not a single moment of any episode in which I can say that this is bad or that's a bad character. My favorite character on rewatch um, is probably Ed. Ed. Oh, Ed. yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I'm assuming you want a reason why. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, although a lot of people might pick Spike or Faye or even Ein, because Ein is a character all itself, and he's a <laughs> yeah, fucking, fucking dog. dog man. Ein is he's a great, corgi. Dude. Fucking corgi. He's a corgi, and he's a amazing character that gets growth but ed so ed when you first meet her is um a hacker and then she gets kind of trapped by the uh you know picked up by the bebop crew and part of the crew ed is i think she's 13 years old is she 13 she's, or 14 she's she young enough she's like 12. yeah she's, she's like 12 she's very young so mm -hmm. The way that the character is played is this incredibly, like, fun and naive character that the animators have, must have had just so much joy put into it. Because the way that Ed moves through the entire series is so kind of, like, spastic and fun. 
like it, it, it brings me to episode eighteen, Mushroom Samba. Seventeen. Seventeen. Mushroom Samba. Yeah. Seventeen. 17. Um, in which uh, the the episode is about them going to look for mushrooms, or so them going to look for food. But Ed and I get hungry, and they search and they go to look for food. And Ed literally is like somersaulting down the road, and then she sees some guy eating a hot dog, runs right up to him, calls him a meanie, and like skips and then lays down on the ground. Like, Ed is such a fun character, even up to when you get to, to her backstory with her father showing up. And it it's ridiculous how relatable she is as a character. Like, all these characters are relatable. Except uh, I've never been in the mob, so I wouldn't know about, like, Spike, and there have been a cop, so I wouldn't know about Jet. But I was a kid at one point, so the whole, like, naivete, just joy and love for life is probably what makes Ed one of my, if not, no, sorry, my favorite character. But even then, it's difficult, because I love them all, but Ed takes the cake for me. Are you still not able to pick you know, Shane? No, I think I got it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was even in the back of my mind thinking of picking Ed because to me, to me personally, I don't know about you guys, but Ed seems like, theoretically, the most important character on the show he, because yeah. you look at the rest of the crew of the Bebop and they're all horribly broken people. They're all shells of their former selves. Yep. Just, you know, because of what they've gone through. Spike going through what he went through with the Syndicate and Vicious. Mm -hmm. um, Faye and her backstory getting amnesia after a horrible accident and then having the only person that really cared about her just up and vanish. Um... Jet's past as a cop and uh, the fact that he was abandoned by his girlfriend. They're all horribly broken people. They're all unhinged. They're all hurting. Ed isn't like that, mainly because she is a kid. Like, she brings that element of innocence to the crew that I think they desperately needed at that point in the series. Like, Ed is the glue that keeps them all together. And for that reason, I think I'm going to agree with Spencer that Ed is my favorite character. Just because not only is she a ton of fun and she's hilarious. Um, she's really funny. Just, just, just the fact that she represents this childlike innocence that the rest of the crew has lost over the years... And the fact that she shows up and basically joins the crew basically puts that innocence back into their lives. And I think the way she acts and the way she views the world is really important to the crew. It basically, in my mind, it keeps them going. Like, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for Ed showing up, I don't think that... I think things would be a lot different. So I think Ed showing up and having that innocence and that spark in her basically keeps them all together. So for that reason, Ed's my and favorite. Then he, and then when Ed leaves, they all leave. And then when she fucking leaves, I cried Once so hard. Ed leaves, the entire Bebop crew is like, okay, time to mope around. Okay, we're done. Yeah, we're, we're fucking done here. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no reason... Ironically, after Ed leaves, that's when Spike also leaves, and then he fucking dies. <laughs> we'll we're get into get that, to that later. So, we're getting to that later. Let's just... Yeah. Um, when However, it comes to... yeah. Yeah. Matthew, yeah. what is your favorite character? Um, I mean, with the thing is Bebop is that this... Every character, even the, like the side characters, have all of their have all of their have quirks and stuff that I love, and just the all so well developed. Like from, like from, the from Jet to Fade to Ed to uh, no to no, even like uh, even Vicious, who even though he gets only like five episodes of screen time, and even then he's not really in those episodes that much. He's more of a. Uh, of a shadow lingering over the events of the of that arc. Yeah. He's more of like an ominous figure. Ominous figure. 
the fact is, is that the little we see of Vicious, he's still a well-developed character. Like, he, he still feels like a person. Um, but, because I am an asshole, and I am going, and, and I'm obvious as fuck, and my favorite character from Bebop is, and always will be, Spike Spiegel. Uh, me, How original! Yeah, no, I, that's what I said. Uh, obvious choice is obvious. But what Spike Spiegel... Is, no, Spike's, Spike as a character is the perfect example of... And people cite how... Like, I, whenever I see people talk about be, uh, like Spike as a character, they always point out like the obvious of like... I was like, oh, he's badass, or bruh, he doesn't care about anything, and that's what makes him... He's cool as fuck. But what, no, but what I see when I see Spike is I see someone who just doesn't care anymore. I see somebody... And I see a person who is so broken, so done with life... That he's basically de- that the only reason he doesn't care is because he's just literally so uh, treading through life, waiting for something to happen, so he can just be like just off himself basically, and it's some and to me, Spike is one of the more it is in an essence one of the most one of the more tragic characters of Bebop. Because he has all these opportunities to fix himself. All these opportunities to actually move on from his shit. And you you know what he does? He just wallows in his own self-pity. And I'm not gonna lie, I see a lot of me in that. And that's a... <laughs> I know it's not, not a good thing, but I see a lot of me in Spike. In, the, in terms of that. Also, the fact is, is that I think out of the entire... Ca- I think... I think if it wasn't for Spike, the show would not nearly be as entertaining as it is. Because Spike gets... Pl- no, no. Def- definitely no, not. He w- it would, because Spike gets most of the best moments of the show. And... No, he gets the best dialogue of the show. that b- uh, By far. Um... And I think he had, and I think in terms in terms of his philosophy when it comes to like fighting and stuff, if I'm, it's it's the type of it it's it, people have compared it to Bruce Lee, but I've noticed that like it's a very no it, the way the way he described the fight like in the episode Walsh for Venus where it's like you move move like water. It's almost it it's almost like that Spike is kind of like. Be, you is being used by Watanabe to be to express like his ideas about like uh, Buddhism and stuff. Because if you see his other works, like mainly that of like uh, uh, Samurai Champloo as well, uh, he has a very the, the, uh, Watanabe has a lot of like. Buddhist ideals in his shows, uh, mainly that of existentialism and stuff like that, and it's all, and Spike is the way he portrays that stuff, and it's done so well. To me, also Spike's design is fucking like Spike is one of those instantly iconic anime characters that you, when you see Spike, you know exactly who he is and where he's from, and. Not too many, and not at a, and especially considering the glut of anime nowadays, the fact is, is that if you can recognize a character like that, that's impressive. So, I don't know. Spike Spe- Spike Spiegel to me is just is argue- arguably one of the best protagonists in anime. One of the absolute best ones. Um, yeah, I can't I can't argue with that. Yeah, no way. Uh. Now, normally here we'd go to a least favorite character, but considering that Bebop has no bad characters, I'm pretty sure that this would be... Nope. Considering that, 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 that through all three of our recollections, we all said the exact same thing, which Bebop has no bad characters, there is no least favorite character at all, there, because there are great. There are literally no bad characters in the show, even throwaway side characters... Like they're they're all great like the th- in their own like, unique like ways. Like they're all great. Like the three old men. 
Like, yes, yes, the, three. Yes, the okay. fucking old man. I was, I was hoping somebody would bring up the old men because I have the greatest memories of like the first episode, the old men playing cards, and then Mushroom Samba, the old men talking to the, uh, sadly, since it had come out yet, but basically the the bounty hunter and the other bounty hunter to uh, African Americans. Um, yeah. Reminded me of like Black Dynamite or like Black Exploitation films. Oh, it's 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 that episode's inspired by those. So, yeah, because it was, and the fact that like he he, he gets a like, brain freeze, and the old men are like, you know what solves that? Mushrooms. And I'm just like, oh my god, the Fuck three it, old I men love... are amazing. Uh, dude, they, Julia, they have Julia yeah, shows oh, up like Julia. two episodes. Yeah, dude, and she's fucking uh... great. Yeah, don't... and they they fucking show up. Whenever it doesn't fucking matter. Oh yeah, the, they'll the just show up out of the blue. Oh yeah, the three old men have no purpose in this show. They really don't. No. They just they they just they're just there to be funny. But the but <laughs> they're funny. I I I love their interactions. Um, like and I love like the I love like the one-off villains too. Uh, like mm-hmm. Gren is great. Um, Gren, Gren is yeah, Gren, great. Gren is great. Uh, Pierre LeFou is fucking horrifying. Uh, mm. Pierre Lefou is terrifying. Yeah, but the at the same bomber. time, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the, the teddy. Oh, the fucking teddy. The teddy bomber, bomber is Cowboy. actually a really okay. We'll, well get to that well later. Well developed character. But, but the, the teddy bomber was like this really interesting, like like Watanabe's take on like capitalism, mm-hmm. and it was oh, okay. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Oh my fucking cowboy Andy. Oh my god. Uh, so cowboy. Get started on cowboy Andy. Cowboy, uh, Cowboy Andy, um, ca- uh, uh, it's, it's such a great cast. Um, but now time for the most difficult thing you've ever done. What is your favorite episode of Cowboy Bebop? I already told you I can't pick. Yeah, so, so Shane is not gonna pick. He's gonna do a t- brief top five. So we're gonna do Shane first. Yeah, I, cause, because the thing with this show is... Because we we've all, anime has a real big problem with keeping the quality consistent throughout its entire runtime. Yeah. A lot of series, especially in the second halves, have these weird slugs. Yeah. Where like some episodes will just dip in quality for no reason and it'll start spiking all over <coughs> the place. Super. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um. But with Bebop, it's different. Like. Much like there's no bad characters in the show, there's no bad episodes. Every episode in its own right is either really good or really great for whatever reason. So, because of that, I can't pick a favorite episode, because I can't pick one out of these 26 that stood out the most to me, because they're all fucking great. So, I'm going to do a real quick top five of my top five favorite Bebop episodes in no particular order, just the five that I enjoyed the most. So, here we go. In no particular order... Um, episode 5, Battle of the Fallen Angels. It's a fucking classic, we all know that. Um, Toys in the Attic. The fucking Alien parody. Good shit there. It's really funny, ep- fucking, really funny episode. It's really funny episode. Remem- remember, don't leave food in the fridge, kids, or it'll go bad. Or you'll have to and kick it out into space. Grow have, symbiotes or some have, shit. you have to kick it out into space via 2001 parody. Which is one of the or, funniest um, sequences I've ever seen in a show. Or you'll have to use a, a flamethrower to try to light your cigarette. You'll have to use a f- <laughs> He fucking burns his entire um, cigarette and just goes away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Jupiter Jazz. And when I say, when I say Jupiter Jazz because it's a two-parter, I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to put both parts together into one episode because fuck you guys. I... <laughs> So, the entirety of Jupiter Jazz is one big episode, because that's the first... Other than Battle of the Fallen Angels, that's the first time we really see um, Spike and Vicious Duke. interact. Yeah. Duke out. Um, and the stuff with Gren is amazing. The fact that he's he's a transgender person. Mm-hmm. Fucking great. Tra- the only time you see tits in the show, A transgender by the way. person who's not portrayed as a joke or a, as a weirdo or a fucking yeah, he's portrayed outcast. as a fucking person yeah mm-hmm. he's portrayed as a person who has an actual arc and has real emotions so good on you 
fucking Watanabe. Way to go there. Um, Pierre Lafoe. Because I talked to I talked to Matt about this. This shows this this episode is fucking brilliant. Mainly because it stood out to me uh, the most because of its drastic change in styles within the episode itself. Because the first the first half is a really dark, gritty noir type feel, and then in the second half they go to like this fucking neon soaked surrealist hellscape. In the fucking uh, amusement park. Reminds me of the killing and, joke, actually. Yeah, actually, I could see that. Mm. Um, and we already said the show is animated beautifully. So when an episode stands out as having some of the best animation in a show that's filled with amazing animation, that's saying something. Because the fight scenes in Pierre LeFou are some of the best traditional animation I've seen in a long ass time. It's fucking brilliant. So smooth yeah. and fluid. I love it. Um, and then my final pick is Real Folk Blues, both parts, because that finale is just... I'm... Okay. I'm almost tearing up thinking about it right now. I have to stop. <laughs> Lit. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that, that finale is just brilliantly executed. Um, the fact that they leave the ending with Spike ambiguous, so you can... It's not really clear what happens to him. Um, obviously, the final encounter with Vicious is really well done. Uh, everything with the the Red Dragons is fucking great. I I just love it. So, those are my picks. Those are my top five. Spencer, what is your favorite episode of Bebop? Because I think uh, we all know uh, what it is. Okay. Uh, so, I guess honorable mentions will go to episode five and... Battle of the Three Angels, that scene oh, yeah. with that like 30 second to 45 second scene of Spike falling in slow motion. It's actually like two Song minutes. It's actually, like two, mi- it's actually like two minutes. It's, it's, yeah, it's it's really long. It, it feels like like 30 seconds because it's that well done. Um, <laughs> with like Greenberg playing on top of it, and, like flash images of Spike's past as he like throws a grenade into a church, like. <laughs> The whole scene in time is like two minutes, but actually in universe it's five seconds because the grenade explodes. So yeah. the way that it's done um, is is just perfection incarnate and that episode. Actually, Spence yes? uh if I could interrupt real quick, uh I just want to list a couple honorable mentions real quick because sure. there's too many good episodes. Sure, sure. Um uh, I didn't even mention any of the backstory episodes, mm-hmm. uh with like Jet and Faye or whatever. Uh, episode 10 is fucking great. Jet's backstory is really heartbreaking. Episode 15, My Funny Valentine with Faye and her backstory. Ah, God, this show fucks me up emotionally. <laughs> um, episode 17, Mushroom Samba is just fucking hilarious. Fucking... <laughs> just the fact that they all get high. Uh, just the and lastly, head. Cowboy... And, yeah, and lastly, Cowboy Funk with Cowboy Andy... God damn, the parallels between him and Spike are just fucking amazing. Okay, I'm done. Keep going. Okay, so that's one honorable mention. I'm going to give two more. I'm going to give a honorable mention to Stray Dog Strut, episode two of the entire oh, series. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Stray Dog Strut is the episode in which the Corgi data dog, Ein, gets introduced. And if you have never seen Ein, Ein is honestly... The- probably the cutest animated dog of all time and one of the most like well like designed characters in the show the most like the most realistically animated animal i've seen in anime actually so i want i want him (laughs) even even the story is like really funny with like with the whole kids uh fishing and then they, they pull up the villain and just goes, what time is it? And they go, it's, it's about half past four. And he just throws the kids into the river. It's, <laughs> it's, I, yeah, I know, it's great. Is... <laughs> um, and my last um, honorable mention is going to be episode 17, Mushroom Samba. Uh, Mushroom Samba is just a, like one of those quintessential like, like sub-episodes that really doesn't do anything to further the overall story or characterization of any of the characters, except for they're all hungry. But there's something amazing about seeing Ed and 
Ed riding a scooter with Ayn in like a little backpack as Spike is walk is walking in place on a stairs, thinking he's going to the stairway to heaven. Uh, Faye is in the bathroom pretending to swim, and Jet is having a conversation with some bonsai plants. Like, and the whole episode is is amazing because it's like, in the end, they were shiitake mushrooms. Like, in the end, they weren't even mushrooms. real mushrooms. They were just, just they weren't drugs. They were just normal. They were just shiitake mushrooms. And you know what? Because I can, because I'm. I'm looking at it right now. One more little mansion before my favorites, and it's going to be Speak Like a Child. Um, oh, 18. yeah, that one. So, I was born 1997. Uh, this stuff died in, like, a year. But it's it's the episode in which Spike and Jet open a package uh, that is containing one of the last Beta Max tapes. And so they have mm-hmm. to go to the ruins of Old Earth to kind of check it out. And it's just an incredibly well-made episode. Uh, so I would recommend that. But to nobody's surprise, the episode I'm going to talk about the most is episode 22, Cowboy Funk. Mm. So Cowboy Funk is an episode that revolves that revolves around actually. Before I get into it, this is amazing. Um, if you Google Cowboy Bebop episodes, it gives like a short snippet of it. And what it says is the Teddy Bomber, a terrorist with a fluffy toy fetish, is planting explosives in tall buildings all over town. And I mean, if that doesn't explain the episode, I don't know what does. Um, Actually, you know what? I wonder. I wonder how Funimation <laughs> like lists it. You keep going. I'll figure yeah, that you out. Keep, you figure it out. Uh, so Cowboy Funk is near the end of the episode, uh, near the end of the series, and it's once again it's one of those kind of semi throwaway episodes. Um, it basically features a guy called the Teddy Bomber who puts uh, explosives in teddy bears and blows up buildings. And when he gets caught by Spike, he's like, "Wait, you're Spike's vehicle." Man, you're one of the most feared in, in one of the most feared bounty hunters ever. And he goes, "You and Andy." And Spike's like, "Who's Andy?" And then you hear whistling, and you hear whistling, and you hear a horse trot. And my immediate response at the time was, "The fuck is a horse doing in space? How does it breathe? How does it work? What?" And then this guy named Cowboy Andy shows up in full cowboy regalia. And then points a gun at Spike and goes, you're the Teddy Bomber, aren't you? The Teddy Bomber gets away. Through the entire episode, it is literally Spike going, I can't believe that guy Andy. I can't believe... <laughs> they go YMCA, and Jack goes, I didn't know he's Christian. And Ed goes, no, it's the Young Males Cowboy Association. And I'm just like, come on. The music is Western-inspired, but also funk-inspired and amazing. Um, the fact the that fact, the music plays every time every, he shows up every single time if you look up the track, the track is called Go Go Cactus Man, don't ask how I know that I listen to it a lot when he rides his fucking horse up the escalator when he rides his horse <laughs> up up an elevator and comes out into a part into a masquerade party on horseback on horseback and, not, and a lot can't be said about Cowboy Andy and how he's basically the split image of Spike in that final fight between Cowboy Andy and Cowboy and Cowboy Spike. Ugh. Cowboy, Cowboy Spike. Spike. Uh, Spike and Cowboy Andy is actually really well animated and really well done, and it really yeah. kind of draws that parallel between Andy and Spike and how they're kind of like the same person. However, they're basically the same person. The ending is what gets me all the time. Because when they when he first talks about Cowboy Andy and how Spike has fucking horseshoe prints on his back, the team is like, uh, it's like a horse I can believe, but a cowboy? You, 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 you could say he was a space samurai, and I believe it more. And then the oh god, and I then forgot the, about the, 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 he fucking becomes a space. Oh, and then he becomes, he becomes a fucking a space, space samurai. samurai. <laughs> and he's dre- and Cowboy Andy. After he looks at, at Spike, snaps his fingers, and goes, see a space cowboy. Which is like, you know, hey, ding, end episode. Hey, they said it. And then, at the end of the episode, instead of saying what you who say, it just says, see you, space samurai. And all of that episode filled me with such joy and happiness that the immediate episode, which I think is Brain Scratch. Um, yeah, it, it is, is Brain Scratch, Scratch. Which is the most trippy episode. Uh, <laughs> didn't feel like that big of a deal because I was riding on that high of no. how Cowboy Funk was no, like honestly. one of the best 
episodes of anime ever, and one of the greatest self-contained episodes in Cowboy Bebop. My favorite well, honestly, episode. Honestly, the fucking scene near the end where Spike and Andy are, like, fucking crawling up the skyscraper... Yep. To get to fight each other, it's like, oh my god, this is fucking ridiculous. Dude, I love how at the end they don't even care about the teddy bomber anymore, and the teddy bomber's trying to get him them to arrest him. Oh my god. <laughs> and then fucking... In front of City Hall, when yeah. they're, like, fighting, and, and the teddy bomber's like, are you ignoring me? Pay attention! And they're just like, shut up! And so he blows up yeah, City Hall shut and Shut up, go away. away. And then fucking in the end, Faye just catches and, him. And it's like, yeah, wow, this was an easy yeah. bounty. Once again, that was one of the four times they get an actual bounty, and this was three million Wulongs. And by the next episode, they've blown all three million Wulongs. Probably because Faye picked up the bounty yep. and then spent it on gambling. Yep, yeah, probably. probably. And also the scene, the the fucking end of the fight scene where they're on top of the skyscraper and it's crumbling, and, Spike. and then Spike's like, God, this Cowboy Andy guy, and he smashes the desk, and then the whole tower just fucking crumbles. <laughs> and then Andy goes, yep, you're the real cowboy, that was a hell of a punch, and <laughs> puts gives, the fucking gives hat on his head, and he hat on him, it. And then, and then fucking um, Ed puts the hat, hat on, and Ayn is riding on top of Ed like a horse. So, oh my god, the best episode. <laughs> I, like fucking, like fucking. He's like, ah, I'm retiring from the cowboy game. I'm gonna go do something else. And then he shows up as the fucking samurai, samurai with like a katana and like his hair tied back and like those old samurai. He's got his hair back tied in back in a fucking ponytail. It's like, like, oh my fucking well, I'm a god. Jew. Ahoy! And he calls his horse like a fucking Japanese samurai name, and he rides into the sunset. <laughs> it, oh, uh, that's when you realize man. the creators did not give a fuck they didn't get it they, uh, they, they love i love this show Dude, fucking, okay yeah. oh the uh, best the oh my best. god okay matt your turn bud yeah uh my favorite episode of the show is one both of you have mentioned uh it's uh episode five ballad of fallen angels uh mm -hmm. that yeah. yeah yeah it's um ballad of, and i think what really stood out to me about ballad of fallen angels compared to the rest of the series uh even the other episodes of that, like, of the, because, like, Battle of Fallen Angels is basically the beginning of, like, the five-episode story arc for of Spike versus Vicious, but what stood out to me was, uh, I mean, the first, I mean, if anything, Jupiter Jazz and, uh, Real Folk Blues are both, like, crime dramas, basically. Um, they're both crime dramas. Uh, Battle of Fallen Angels, with the exception of the first half of Pure LeFou, is the closest Bebop has come to pure noir. And, if anything, Bebop is basically... Bebop is basically a... is basically a neo-noir. It's a, it's a noir in space. And, Battle of Fallen Angels is the best representation of what Bebop is trying to do with the noir genre, and that's turn it on his head and subvert the, the tropes you would normally find in a noir, uh, like the yeah the femme fatale, the uh, the bro uh, the uh, the vo the monologues, the voiceovers, the the tragic past, the morally ambiguous characters, the harsh ass lighting, all of the different tropes you normally see in a noir, and it subverts them. But what really stood, but outside of that, what really stands out about Ballad of Fallen Angels is its atmosphere. How I want you guys to actually think how much dialogue is actually in Ballad of Fallen Angels. Not a hell of a lot. It's mostly visual storytelling. Yeah, same with Pierre LeFou, which, by the way, is my runner up. Um, yes. Uh, the only reason it's not on there is because I feel Pierre. I, I, it, the only reason I feel is that I, I feel Ballad of Fallen Angels is slightly better. Um, but. Uh, what really stood... It, like, there's not much dialogue in it. Uh, I think the, the last, like... I want to say, like, five minutes... Have, like, no dialogue... Like, they have, like, one exchange of dialogue. And that's that brief interaction between Spike and Vicious. In probably one of the most famous images from the series... Where Spike is on the ground... With the gun pointed at Vicious... And Vicious is standing over him with the katana straight in his face. Uh, yeah. By the most... By, I think the most famous image from the series. Mm, um, yeah. yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, the most famous image from the series, and they have that mo they have that discuss that like that uh that discussion on sp about Spike, and it's just so well, 
and one, the dialogue, the, when there is dialogue, it's really well done dialogue, and it's really well written, uh, but I, of course, I, I think, honestly, what put tips all the ace, Spencer mentioned it before, is the two-minute Greenbird sequence, because Bebop does something that not even fucking other adult shows not just anime but just adult stuff in general does not do and that and that is you know shut the fuck up <laughs> and it doesn't tell us everything we need to know it tells exactly what we need to know but just enough that it leaves it vague enough that we can make our own conclusions we never exactly find out like we never really find out what happened between Spike Vicious and Julia we can kind of guess what happened because they make it clear, they, because something did go down between them, but we're not exactly sure the the specifics. And we also we also never find out like how that final battle went down. We never exactly uh, the spikes time uh, after leaving the syndicate, and uh, you know, and uh, him joining the bebop. That stuff is super vague, and we never really find out what his life like was that. Because I think Ball of the Fallen Angels especially understand, and Bebop in general, understands that less is more. The less, you, it gives us just what we need to know, that's it, and then just lets the story speak for itself. And I think that's what makes Bebop great. It doesn't, it doesn't spoon feed you, it just tells, it just says, here's the story, now fucking watch it. And not enough, and more shows need to do that. Even some of the anime I'm enjoying this season don't do that. Like, as much as I'm fucking loving Darling in the Franks, it does kind of spoon feed some aspects, especially when in regards to the metaphors. So, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate when a series like Bebop actually decides to give us a, to give us something that's truly adult and sits a, and treats us like adults and doesn't treat us it doesn't treat us like idiots so holy moly what? i don't know holy moly the wowzers uh, wowzers uh any uh now in terms of uh, is there anything that we haven't brought up that people want to bring up about Bebop? The memes. The the memes. Oh, that is Bebop memes. I was I was gonna say the soundtrack, but you know what? We'll, memes are yeah, more important. The soundtrack. Okay, actually, yeah. Okay. Let's bring up the soundtrack. soundtrack. Because I think the fact that we have not talked about Bebop's soundtrack is kind of heresy, considering that it's Bebop's soundtrack. <laughs> considering that, like, I'm a music kid, and I haven't once brought up the fact that every episode soundtrack is perfect. This OST <laughs> is perfect. <laughs> That it's Everything. the greatest anime OSC of all time, and that's not even an exaggeration. I consider it the best no, anime that's, soundtrack that's a legit ever made. Claim. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's that could be considered fact. Yeah. So let's literally start from the beginning, okay? Let's talk about Tank. Ugh. Best one of, if not the best opening tracks for an anime I've ever heard in my life. Just putting that out there. Isolate that audio, folks. Because he's not lying. It's 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 in my top ten, definitely. It's it's one hundred percent in my top ten. It's Tank not my favorite is... opening. I have my, I know what my favorite opening is. Actually, no. Tank is my like is is in my top three favorite openings. Um, I can it's, tell that, you that it's so good. It's so good that like from a jazz standpoint, that it is quintessential big band style jazz. Yeah. It is everything right with the world put into, like, a minute, 20 seconds for the opening, like, or, like, three minutes, I think it is, for the full yeah. track. Oh, God, dude, Tank is so good. And the mm. way that uh, speak it there's, like, hidden, like, meanings and references in the actual title screen and opening. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Speaking of jazz, uh, who's... Now, whoever's idea in the crew... Was the idea to put a space western to jazz music? Please give that man 
all of the money in the world because that like li- like <laughs> that was the most genius like liter- idea. Literally all all I'm gonna say about the soundtrack, other than it's incredible, is Yoko Kano, the composer, is a fucking genius. That's all I'm gonna Yoko say. Yoko Kano's the woman. greatest anime. She's the greatest anime yeah. composer of all time. Give that not. woman. You know what? Fuck it. Make her the prime minister of Japan. There you go. I, I want hashtag twenty whatever. <laughs> Yoko Kono as Yoko Kano prime for prez. Give give her a fucking place in Japanese government because goddamn that one score she made for that one anime is better than the entirety yeah. of the government system in Japan. I would argue that Yoko, Japan. Yoko Kano is one of the great, is, is the greatest anime composer of all time. She is not, she's, I mean, she's done more than just Bebop. She did Ghost yeah. in the Sh- She worked on Standalone Complex. She worked on Escaflone. She's done League's other stuff. She did some stuff. She did Macross. Uh, like, her stuff is legend. She's, le- she's a legend, and her work with Bebop is probably her best work. Uh, bar, bar none. Paul, and what I love about it is that you can you can listen to the tracks and you know what episodes they're from. Yeah. You know from what episodes they're from. From like you have like you you have an episode where it's like you'll have like more blues inspired soundtrack to like a more upbeat like jazz to like um to uh at one point uh, to at one point you have uh heavy metal you have uh you have an opera at mm-hmm. one point um yep you have an opera yep, episode opera. then you have you have western music with cowboy funk cowboy uh, funk yeah. you have Pierre Le Fou which has no music actually if you actually look into the track no, list surprisingly. there's no music in Pierre Le Fou um nope there's no Oh, at least, it, at least, like background music. There's in-world music with the amusement park, and it's fucking horrifying. Um, you have, um, you have, you have uh, my funny Valentine, which has like this kind of like, I want to say, kind of like a romantic comedy vibe, if that makes any sense. Uh, yeah, yeah like but a, it has it has like somber undertones. Kind of R and B ish. Yeah, like uh, then you have the bla- you have, you uh, have uh, black exploitation with the with the mushroom Mushy samba. Yeah. Yeah, which has elements of rap, which would later go on to define Samurai Champloo, which would be his next work. Um, so obviously he has an affinity for hip hop samurai, uh, which also sounds retarded, but actually worked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, uh, yeah, the soundtrack for Bebop is incredible. We also mentioned the animation before, but the animation is amazing, spectacular, is amazing. Just- I think the, one of the things done. I do want to bring up about Bebop, and this is something we want to talk about it because everyone else has discussed it, so might as well put our two cents in. Do you think mm-hmm. Spike is a dead or alive? It'd be really dumb if he wasn't. Yeah, I feel honestly. it only works if he's dead. So I think he's dead. I like okay. I believe that he's dead. I'm gonna go out there right now. However. <laughs> Just to be right, you're playing devil's yeah, advocate. Yeah, I'll play devil's advocate just to be contrarian. So here's why Spike is still alive. If you go back, <laughs> coming from a man who thinks that he's dead, through the episodes, and you look at all of the damage that Spike has received, including the Pierre Lafoe episode in which he got blown up not once but twice, <laughs> um, and survived somehow with less damages than falling out of a roof in a church. Yeah, he, um, su- he survived quite a bit. <laughs> he survived quite a bit. So getting slashed by a katana in the chest as he's surrounded by syndicate agents, which is most like, which will most likely see him as Spike Spiegel and the guy who defeated Vicious and probably take care of him, uh, it's not without the ra- possibility that he has survived. However... And this is Spencer speaking now. Uh, it would remove like all of the emotion of the last episode mm-hmm, of yeah, him just yeah. looking would... at them, going "bang" and falling think... on his face. Yeah, I think much of the confusion from that from that comes from the fact that Watanabe, as a troll, uh, probably as a troll, purposely made that scene brighter and feel different like that when spike yes. yeah when spike dies and he was at an air quotes he it, it doesn't yeah. it feels so different from everything else 
So it's like, is he dead? Is he dreaming? Is this like the afterlife? What what is this? And it's left up to interpretation on exactly what it is. Per- like, yeah. Per- like if if fucking if Spike survived that, it honestly would kind of ruin the finale because it it, it would just ruin the entire emotional build up and payoff to that scene. Yeah. Yeah, and it would it would make everything make a lot less I sense mean, because even in the finale, they don't mention Faye or Jet at all afterwards. Like what happened to them? We a, have no idea what happened to Ed or Ayn. Yeah. Like, if Spike somehow survived, then we should at least get an explanation as to what happened to the rest of the crew, right? So, it only theoretically works if he does end up dying in the end, which I personally think he does because it would make no sense otherwise. But I do understand the theory that he might have somehow survived that. It does make sense. Also, but it um, does make sense. I want to bring up think... the fact. Uh, I, I just want to quickly. Uh, sorry, I wrong. I want to bring up the fact that uh, Spike goes to that outer in the desert, who is the mm-hmm. same person that Spike that, that Spike goes to in the first episode. Oh yeah, the the uh, the shaman. The shaman. And Jet goes to see him, and the shaman talks about stars dying and how his star is dying. And the the moment that Spike is dead, and he knows he's about to die, and you all know what I'm about to say, is yeah. the conversation with Faye. When he turns his back on Faye and leaves the bebop, Spike knows he's not getting out of this alive. When he talks about... Yeah, he knows, he knows he's not coming back. When he back. talks about his fake eye and how he has one eye that sees in the past and the other eye that sees in the present... In a really touching scene that really brings kind of Faye and Spike's character like together and closer, Spike knows he's not making it out. Spike knows that he's lost the one thing that he really cares about, and that was Julia. Yeah. And he's mm-hmm. done. He's willing and ready to just die. So. Yeah. That 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 entire scene is basically him just throwing his life away yeah. because he's lost the only thing that he's ever yeah. cared about. So. Him turning his back on Faye and Jet and leaving the Bebop in that one moment is basically him just saying, I'm ready to die. Yeah. And then even even bringing up the Shaman and the fact that he says that his star is dying, even at the very end, Mm -hmm. after everything's happened, after he's fallen, after he's presumed dead, the last shot in the show is a star going out. Mm -hmm. So fucking symbolism. Yeah. Uh, Some people have interpreted that might be Vicious' star. Um, but I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, but, uh, I think because, uh, because, um, it only works if he's dead because in its essence, Bebop's a noir. And if you know classic noir, the hero doesn't usually make it out alive. So, no, uh, sometimes, sometimes he does, but like not, not usually. Um, so it's, so if we're going by classic noir, he needs to fucking die. <laughs> Just say, so. He needs to die and stay dead. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's dead. Although, I would not be surprised that in, in the next, like, ten years or so, they announce an anime sequel to Cowboy Bebop. I would not be surprised. And oh, look, Spike is alive and well. Or, Woo-hoo-doo. or, why don't we just follow everything. what happens after that? You know, follow Jet as he... Continue to try to but make then sense again, of life. the part it wouldn't be as good though. I, we need the it entire. Yeah, no, it wouldn't. It, no, we need the entire cast, and it wouldn't be that good. But you know, who it knows? would it would tarnish the legacy of the original. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, uh, it would. Yeah. Because because the original series is such a expertly contained narrative, and it's done so perfectly well <laughs> that if you do continue it. That's li- that's literally basically saying, "Hey, we don't care. We're just gonna do more for the sake of doing more," and that defeats the whole purpose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, now, normally here we'd go into nitpicks and criticisms, but it's Bebop. There are no nitpicks and Got criticisms. Got none. Got none. Can't think of any. Can't think of any. Final score time. Uh, fi- okay. Go to final score. Uh, Spencer, you up first. Final score for Bebop. Uh, Cowboy Bebop, in my honest opinion, gets a 10 out of 10. It is a perfect masterpiece of an anime. And, it, and if you have not seen Bebop, or you had questions about Bebop, watch fucking Bebop now. 
do it? Hell, I'll wait. I will end this recording until you watch all 26 episodes. I'll wait. <laughs> okay, I guess Spencer's waiting. Um, I'll pass it off to me then. Yeah. Um, literally, all, all I have to say is 10 out of 10 masterpiece. There's nothing more to say. You've heard us. You've been listening to us for the last hour gush about the show in every aspect imaginable. So there's no way I can't give it a 10 out of 10. It's literally a perfect show. No flaws, just nothing but amazing craftsmanship. Ah, oh, fuck. This, this show threw my entire list out of order because I had somewhat of a determined top 10 anime list. Rewatching this as an adult... And now that I have it fresh on my mind, it just throws everything out of whack. I gotta rethink things, man. 10 out of 10, perfect show. I can't say anything more. Watch it if you haven't. Literally pay for Funimation now just to watch the show and then cancel your subscription. But you shouldn't, because it's worth the money. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm gonna make it a, yeah, it's a 10 out of 10 for me as well. So 10 out of 10 is across the board here. Uh, it, this is, this is... A perf- this is not just a perfect show. This is one of the. This is not just one of the greatest animes ever made. This is one of the greatest shows ever made. N- not even count. Yeah. Like if. We, like yep. if we, this is just one of the greatest singular shows ever made. Just everything about it just works on every possible level. So much care and effort has been taken into making this, and it feels so effortless. Effortless too. Like. Like what Tanabe yeah. even um, even admitted, I think he admitted in an interview that he didn't even like try with Bebop. Apparently, like he was like on autopilot. So, like if that's him, that's impressive. If that's him on autopilot. Like the one I know, I think the one he tried on the most, like the one he said he was really passionate about was Shampoo. Um, and and look, Shampoo is also amazing, but whatever. Um. <laughs> But Bebop is single handedly one of the greatest anime ever made. A, it, 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 not just it, it, one of the greatest shows ever made. And one of probably, probably a, will probably go down as a modern classic of, of sci fi in the, in, in the, in the future. So yeah, 10 out of 10 from me. And with that, that is our thoughts on the masterpiece that is Cowboy Bebop. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now, and now it's time to pick the next week's featured next week's featured anime, Woo! which is not on the random. It's mind. time for next episode crap. Yeah, it's not episode. on the. Ne- it's not on. It's not on the randomizer this time because it will go over, since it's a rotating. Uh, if you guys do not know, uh, one week I pick it, and the one podcast I pick it, and then the next episode it is randomized and then rinse and repeat. So la- so Bebop was picked on the randomizer somehow um somehow somehow we got Bebop the first time (laughs) that was like a strike of luck right there which means that next time is probably gonna be complete horse shit but okay um oh I'm waiting for the horse shit I'm ready for it (laughs) um but um but this uh the next episode I get to I get to pick it now and next week I have a the the anime we're gonna cover is a is actually probably out of all the shows we've covered, this is the most recent show we've done. Um, we're gonna be doing. Yep. Yeah, it um, is. it's a show that aired in two. It's a 2016 anime. It was generally regarded as the best show that came out that year. Uh, for my actually, well, or if not the best, one of the best. It was on many people's top ten lists of that year. Um, and we're gonna of course be talking about. Uh, uh, the Studio Bones effort, based on the critically acclaimed manga of the same name, Mob Psycho 100. Oh shit! Looks like I better yeah. go watch him. Oh, <laughs> fuck! Here we go. Here we go. I'm I'm fucking ready. I watched Mob Psycho for the first time back in December, not that long ago. I'm ready to rewatch it already. Let's fucking I'm go, ready to Mob watch Psycho. It. So yeah, Mob Psycho is up next. <laughs> we promise it will be the last action show we cover for a little bit. Uh, but uh, unless the randomizer fucks unless us over, unless the randomizer fucks us over again, don't be surprised if it does. Um, but it probably will. Uh, but yeah, Mob Psycho 100 will be the next series. Um, 
It's also the shortest series we've covered. It's only 12 episodes. So 12 episodes. Yeah, okay. so it's the shortest series we've covered so far. So this is also a good chance for all of you listening. If you haven't seen Mob Psycho 100 and want to do so before the podcast in two weeks, you will actually have a chance to because it's only 12 episodes, meaning you have plenty of time yeah. to watch it. Um, you can watch it on Crunchyroll or Funimation Now, whatever floats your boat. Just go and watch it because it's fucking great. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about it next time. We're going to be talking about so it next week. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a ton of fun. And I think we're pretty much done here. Okay. Yeah, I think we're ready to wrap this yeah, up. Yeah, so, uh... uh well, my name uh, is... Matt, Shane. Yeah. Yes? Thanks for having me on the podcast. Can't wait until next time I'm on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the, this is Spencer. Uh, he's a... <laughs> hey, this is Spencer. Um, Hi, I am. This is Spencer. I am the Spencer. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. This is my co-host Shane, aka the Bearded One. You can find him at the uh, Bearded Gaming Network on YouTube. Also follow him on Don't Twitter because this. he's he follow him on Twitter because he's actually active on Twitter now. I'm actually yeah, I'm actually active on Twitter now. Who the fucking thunk it? I hate. Man, you I, had some serious Twitter I, beef going on. We there. had some I mega that. beef. Uh, me and. Me and Shane had some pretty nasty beef. Our friendship has not recovered since. It really hasn't. <laughs> it's like when I say when I say nasty beef, I mean it is spoiled rotten. Like we're it's talking, it's I mean, be- it is well done beef. So that, that's it's the like, only reason it's like, why I'm uh, on it's the like a, because their beef hasn't settled yet, and I was to <laughs> mediate between them. <laughs> it's like a medium rare beef, just perfectly ripe. With the fake news, fake, fake news. It's, it's fake news. Um, yeah, I think it's my good name, ending. Yeah, my name is Matt <laughs> Legion Rex. Uh, you can also find my channel where I don't upload. But anyways, you can subscribe to it. Anyway. You can find his dead <laughs> channel where he does not upload anything <laughs> at Legion Rex on YouTube. <laughs> That's it. if you want to go see his archive channel, which is basically what it is at this point. My art. Click the link in no, the description. That, there will be there will be more on that channel at some point. And by, I don't know when, at some point, who knows. And by some point, we mean three years from now when we are not doing this show anymore yeah. and we've gone our separate ways. <laughs> Suddenly I return. But, uh, but yeah, uh, and with, and, and with that, uh, yeah, I, th- yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're pretty yeah. much done here. So, that's your host, Matt. I'm your co-host, Shane. There's our special guest, Spencer. Thanks for joining us, buddy. It was a lot of it fun. It was a lot of fun. Honestly, have me back anytime. I'm willing to put in the work, coach. Put me in. I will I will tag you in. But that wraps it for this episode of the Gap Podcast. We'll see you in two we'll weeks, you two weeks with, to talk about Mob Psycho to 100. Talk about Mob Psycho, it's going to be great. Talk about Mob Psycho 100, and I hope you all have a good day.